Hello everyone, Carrie here from Homestead How. I've been a carnivore for 79 days now. Tomorrow is Emma's day 30. And if you can hear me okay, please let me know. I had some issues with the audio. I am actually in the downstairs of the world famous Montello Theater that my wife and four girls took over nine months ago. There's a movie playing above me and there's a bunch of people watching Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 right now as we speak. So we got them all settled down. I figured I would do this live stream and share some updates on the carnivore diet movie and been making some really good progress, early progress. We're obviously pretty early in it. So I'm going to take a look at some of the chats here. Can everyone hear me okay? Had some audio issues uh, yesterday when I was live streaming with my good friend Sean from Intentional Carnivore. I think I've worked those out, and hopefully you can't hear Guardians of the Galaxy playing too loudly in the background. We can hear you great. Awesome. Thank you. So I hope everyone's doing, doing well out there. Thanks for joining me. And, uh, oh, Carnivore Ron's here. Hey, Ron, how's it going? So Carnivore Ron, uh, we got our waffle iron that, you, that we talked about, so we're going to be making Ron's uh, famous waffle egg recipe. We'll be doing a video on that. So, um, yeah, thanks everyone for joining. I just wanted to give an update on the carnivore diet movie and a uh, couple updates on that. And then just talk about carnivore if anyone wants to talk about it. I've got some time here with the movie going on upstairs. We can talk about anything. If you want to talk about Homestead How or the movie theater uh, or carnivore, I'm up, for, I'm up for any of that. So, um, and I'll... Please, if you have any questions, just shoot them in the side. I'll try to catch those if we can. So I guess the, the first thing with the Carnivore Diet movie, I guess since last week, and this might not be news to all of you. I always have to be careful because every time I look at my YouTube stats, most of the people watching are usually new and they've never even heard of me. So I'll just, I'll give a quick overview. I've been doing the Carnivore Diet for 79 days now. It's completely changed my life. Lost about 40 pounds, but I don't really care about the weight. Everything else that's changed has been amazing for me, including some horrible arthritis that was very, very limiting um, on my activities that I was doing. My sleep's improved, depression, anxiety's all gone. A whole bunch of other things are way better on carnivore, and uh, including my motivation. And I did a video, my 30-day carnivore update, and that was almost 50 days ago, which is unbelievable to me. That video kind of went crazy and it seemed to resonate with people. And I've had so many people since that video 50 days ago say, I started when I watched your 30 day video and you inspired me. And even just in two weeks or three weeks or four weeks since that video, uh, this has changed. My arthritis is going away. The skin condition I had is clearing up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So it's, it's been very moving for me and motivating for me. Uh, being able to see, uh, my thing was, at, at, I was at a very low point at one point in my life with horrible depression where I was just completely hopeless. And I wish I knew about carnivore back then, 20 years ago. My life is so much better now on carnivore these last 79 days. Uh, relationships with my family and everything else is just a million times better. So I, I guess there's I can't go back in time, but I wish I would have known about this earlier. And that's one of the reasons I decided I wanted to do this carnivore diet documentary. I'm really enjoying the YouTube videos and all of the amazing feedback from folks and people saying they've been inspired and things like that. It's been awesome. But I really think we can reach more people doing a full-on documentary. And in a perfect world, it'd be amazing to do a documentary and get it on one of the big streaming services because... I think probably a lot of us here are kind of a little unusual. I watch YouTube all the time. It's like my go-to, but I think most of the population isn't on YouTube as much as personally myself is. They're on these big streaming services. So uh, the other reason I, I realized this talking to my friend Sean yesterday at Intentional Carnivore, what initially got me into doing keto a very long time ago, this was maybe 15 years ago, was a documentary called Fathead. And it's on YouTube now for free. If anyone wants to watch it, I'd highly recommend it. It was a very well done documentary. And it was the first time I had ever heard of keto or ketosis. And uh, frankly, it's kind of led me on the path I'm on now. So I ended up doing keto after that. 
I had some very good success with keto losing weight, but all of these other issues I did not have success with on keto, like my inflammation, sleep issues, depression, anxiety. It helped a little bit, but um, uh, th those all came with carnivore. So th that, that's kind of where I started thinking about doing this carnivore diet uh, documentary. And I know there was one that um, Dr. Barry and all the, the big doctors recently did, and I, I think that's awesome. I want to do something a little bit differently. And I hope that more people do documentaries, and there's other series and documentaries. So they did a series. I want to do just a documentary, just one movie. What I really want to focus on, well, I guess before I get into that, the big update since last week at this time is there's a website up now. So some of you may have seen it, but um, it's just been up for a couple of days, maybe a week at this point. And so the website is carnivoredietmovie.com, carnivoredietmovie.com. And on the website, it talks about what we're trying to do. And there's some links on there to see some of my carnivore update videos. There is a form. So if you're interested in participating in the documentary, you can fill out the form and give us some information. Because that's the big thing with this documentary that I want to do is I, I want to showcase real people and not just people that are overweight. But um, I really want to hit on other people that have different issues such as depression, anxiety, arthritis, autoimmune issues, stomach issues, IBS, Crohn's, things like that. And I want to cover several different use cases. Um, and then I want to follow those people. I know this is kind of ambitious, but this is kind of the perfect world uh, scenario is I want to follow those people for a year and see beginning, middle, and end. And... Um, Obviously, if we had to send a camera crew out to follow a bunch of people, it's just going to be too cost prohibitive. But with technology now, everyone has a phone. So I'm hoping that we're able to have people self-document a good part of their journey for this, for this documentary. So those are some of the big updates. The website is live. I also started a GoFundMe to help fund. Because So here's the thing with this, and I, I want to make this clear. I've mentioned it before. I'm not making a penny off of this. This is a passion project. So I'm not putting a penny in my pocket for this. But in order to do a documentary, it's obviously very expensive, um, especially to do it properly and especially to do it at the quality that would be needed in order to get on one of those big streaming services. So it's going to cost some money to do it. So that's why I set up the GoFundMe. And besides the GoFundMe, we also have the t-shirts that my daughter Emma and I created, Compassionate Carnivore t-shirts. There's always, you can always see those usually on YouTube right below the video. Uh, every penny we get from those, and we've sold quite a few over the last couple of weeks, which is awesome. Every single penny for those goes towards the documentary. Every single penny from the GoFundMe, of course, goes towards the documentary as well. And then we have a membership on Homestead, how people can join. And you can pay like two or three bucks a month if you want to join. And those people, they're getting some of these updates before before now. So some of these, like the 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 outline of the movie I put up on the website and shared with those folks that are members of Homestead How uh, much earlier than everybody else. So that's kind of one of the perks. Uh, but every penny from that also goes to the documentary. So the documentary, um, the GoFundMe, I should say, it, it's been amazing. People have been uh, donating to it. And right now we're at $892. And so with the GoFundMe money and the money from selling the Compassionate Carnivore t-shirts, we're over $1,000. Uh, right now raised for this so that's pretty awesome and pretty exciting especially because this is this is so new i mean i just put the website up in the gofundme a couple days ago and uh so that's that's very very exciting the other big news is uh i put together a rough outline for the documentary and so if you go to carnivoredietmovie.com there's a blog section and in that blog section i have it's a very rough draft. It's just a, the, we're at the very early stages right now, but it's a very rough draft of what the carnivore documentary will be. So um, I guess just real quickly, there's the course an introduction and then there's a carnivore diet overview and then it's meeting the participants. And again, that's the big part of this is the people that are participating. I want the focus to be on real people. That's one thing I really believe is that um, I don't want to, and I couldn't if I wanted to, change somebody else. They have to decide to change themselves. They have to decide to be their captain of their own ship. I think the only thing that we can do is just kind of lead by example and show our example. And that's why I've been doing my YouTube videos. Here's, here's my results, good and bad, mostly amazingly good on carnivore. 
Um, I try not to overhype it, but sometimes I get a little enthusiastic. But I, I mean, I stand by everything I say. Everything I said has been true. But um, I want to share the truth about carnivore diet. And I want to share real examples from real people. I also want to have some experts in there, of course. Like, it would be amazing if Dr. Barry or Dr. Chafee wanted to participate uh, as well. But I want the main focus to be on the, the, the real people with uh, different issues. So, um, the other big news on the carnivore diet documentary is I've been getting so many people reaching out that want to participate. And again, if you want to participate, you can register. It's going to be a while. Just be forewarned. Um, there's over 60 people right now that have already registered that said, I've, I've done keto or I've done carnivore or I'm starting back up doing carnivore again. And I want to document my journey and I want to showcase it in the documentary. So that's been amazing. Those are all gathering up in my inbox. And one of the next steps, uh, I was talking to uh, my good friend Sean from Intentional Carnivore yesterday after our live stream. If you guys didn't see that, it's on his channel. We had a great conversation. Sean is the man. If you guys haven't, aren't watching Sean's stuff, you're missing out. You got to go subscribe to his channel. The man lost 243 pounds in one year. It's just, his story is so amazing. I said to him, in the dictionary, next to the word determination is a picture of Sean from Intentional Carnivore. To, just to do what he did. And it's not just the weight that's so impressive. It's He was having horrible depression to the point he couldn't even get up off the couch. So he overcame just this devastating depression and he lost 243 pounds. And oh, by the way, the man did it in one year. It's amazing. So I'd, I'd really love to have Sean's story in the documentary for sure. Uh, but we were talking after a live stream and he had a really good point. He's like, maybe a good next step with all of these 60 folks that have entered would be have them do a little, maybe it's 60 seconds or two minutes, a little video recording of themselves talking about themselves, the carnivore diet, what their issue is, their health issue. Is it obesity, diabetes? What is it? And what are they trying to achieve? And that could be a good way to sort of start the process. So I, I think that's a, a great idea. So uh, I'm going to look into doing that as a next step. I'm trying to put some processes in place because everything is happening very quickly. And when I look in my inbox, even, even for today, I look on my phone and there's dozens and dozens of people that have signed up to participate in the carnivore diet documentary. So it's great. It's amazing. It's moving quickly. And I have the, uh, the motivation now that I never would have had before to, uh, to do this and the community as well. That's been what's awesome. I've been doing YouTube now for eight years 514 videos a lot of you know i just hit a hundred thousand subscribers last week i just got an email i'm getting my plaque so that's going to be awesome we'll have a little have a little plaque on the wall right there my hundred thousand subscribers and then shortly after that we hit 15 million views but most of those videos were of course not on carnivore diet they were about uh homesteading and then more recently over the last nine months about taking over this place above me our or historic uh, movie theater and running it with my girls and my wife so so anyways i've been doing youtube a long time but the community on the carnivore side no offense against the the homesteading community but i'd i'd, I'd get some good videos uh i have a couple videos that had a couple million views but very few comments and there's so much more commenting and camaraderie and community with the carnivore folks I see all of you commenting and talking right now, and it's awesome. And so I, the, the whole thing, I guess my point with the carnivore diet documentary is this is going to be very interesting because it's almost like a crowdsourced deal. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying, hey, this is me. We're doing it my way. No, I'm totally open. I've gotten some really good ideas. So somebody, I think he might be on the chat here. Uh, he, he gave me a really good idea. He was like, you really need to show the scale of carnivore. Um, I was like, you're absolutely right. And I don't know how to do that yet. Maybe if there was a big carnivore conference, we could show all the people. But I guess the scale we're talking about, the number of people that are doing carnivore. Because if you guys are like me, and I'm sure you are, when you first heard about carnivore, you're like, this is insane. This is nuts. You're going to eat meat only? Who does that? Nobody does it. And I've since found a lot of people do it. A lot of people do it. I think um, I was joking with, uh, I, I launched a video today with Anita, the ketogenic woman. She's amazing. If you guys want to know what to eat, 
on a carnivore diet. She does carnivore diet recipes over at Ketogenic Woman, and she's she's just amazing. She's I mean this as the highest compliment, but she she gives me the Mister Rogers vibe. She's just so calm and so easy to listen to, and her production value. She could be on the Food Network. She's doing a YouTube video cooking show. And it's all, she did keto recipes at first, and now it's almost exclusively carnivore recipes. And, uh, sorry, I'm going off on a tangent here. I don't know why I was talking about. But she's, she's, a, she's amazing. So, quantity versus quality. Yeah, so what do we got here? P-R-A-W, I'm going to post this up here right now. Mike. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Here we go. Mike. Yes, Mike, this was your suggestion, I believe, right? So quantity versus quality is important to show how big the carnivore community really is. Absolutely. That, that was what I was going to say about Anita. So I did the video with her and she was telling me you would be amazed at how many people in their 60s, 70s, 80s are carnivores. That, that's her, her whole audience. And I've launched a video. I did an interview with her. I launched that video today. And I, I've gotten so many comments, probably 100 comments today from people um, that are in their 60s, 70s, and 80s, and they're just thriving on carnivore. And I did a video with Carnivore Ron, who's on here now. And Ron's 71. He's been doing carnivore for five years, and that man is thriving and running circles around all his peers at the gym. Doesn't have all the old aches and pains that most 71-year-olds do. And since I did that video with Ron, I've had literally hundreds of comments, and a lot of them are from people that are at 70s or 80s. In fact, I had a phone call last week. This guy called me up and I was, I answered the phone and he's like, I just want to thank you for your videos. They've been very inspiring to me. And I just wanted to personally thank you. And it was, he was very, very nice and touching. But when he was speaking, I was like, sounded like he was maybe 40 years old or something. He just sounded like he had a lot, big, some pep in his step, some energy. He didn't sound like he was older. And, and then he told me he was, I think he said he was 87. 87 years old and he's been doing carnivore for a couple of years and he's just just thriving so long story short there's a lot more carnivores out there and i think they're i think they're carnivores in the closet because that's the only bad thing i found about carnivore is you go to a big group gathering or something you talk about it, or people to me they're like hey you look great you lost a bunch of weight what are you doing i'm like oh here we go uh so there's creative ways to get around that but i think there's a lot more carnivores out there that just don't talk about it even, uh, I think around day 40, I went to the dentist and had my teeth cleaned. Talked about this in a previous video. My gums are the healthiest they've ever been. No bleeding. It's just amazing what carnivore does for your, for your gum health. But the, the woman cleaning my teeth, she was like, everybody I see in here, their gums, they just have huge inflammation. And when you have inflammation in your gums, that's a sign it's in your body. And she's like, you have like no inflammation in your gums. And then I kind of told her, yeah, I've been doing this kind of weird diet. And she just came right out. And she's like, is, is it the carnivore diet? And she was actually doing it. She was. She said she was, I think, 95% carnivore. And her husband uh, was the same. And I, I never would have thought. So I bet you, you walk through a store or you go to a football game or something, there's probably a lot of carnivores in hiding there. But to Mike's point, showing that in the documentary would be amazing. I've been thinking about that more. Just one thing I was thinking about, Mike, was it'd be really cool, too, if there was just a, a quick like montage of people, maybe in the beginning or maybe in the end of the documentary where like, like, here's what I'm imagining. Dr. Barry standing there saying, I am a carnivore. And then it switches to the next person. And maybe it's just me. I am a carnivore. And then maybe it's Sean from intentional carnivore. I am a carnivore. And it goes through just a various different number of people. Maybe it's Dr. Philip Ovadia, the heart surgeon, who's also a carnivore saying, and then there's a little thing on the screen that says, Dr. Philip Ovadia, heart surgeon. I am a carnivore and have a bunch of those. I think that could be pretty cool. But I like Mike's idea too, if we could get a big group of people, maybe at a conference or something, a big drone shot or overhead shot with hundreds of people all saying, I am a carnivore. That would be, that would be amazing. So thank you, Mike. I'm taking all the feedback and ideas. This is all really good stuff. And Mike's idea here, he mentioned a couple of days ago, and I added that to our outline already. One of the things that's really cool uh, with the outline is it makes this a lot more manageable. So when you look at the outline and we're breaking this big project down into several different steps, it's like, okay, this is a lot easier. We got to do a carnivore diet overview that everyone can understand without scaring people, honest, truthful, but this is just one little tidbit. And we, we try to do the best job we possibly can on just the overview. Then you move on to the next section and you break it up into those little sections. It's a lot easier to 
uh, bite off, no pun intended. So those are some of the big uh, carnivore diet movie updates. I see a lot of chat going on here and I'm way behind. So if you guys have questions or comments or ideas, please feel free to share them. And uh, I'm just going to be here riffing for a while. We've got the movie going on upstairs. So if you guys want to talk about movies or anything else, Travis just said uh, reversed season three. Awesome. Yeah, so the reverse thing, I, st- I have to be honest, I watched the first two. I still have to catch up on the rest. I haven't seen them all. Has anyone seen the whole series of reverse and what did you think about it? And let's click on some of these things here. Oh, here we go. Here's one from John G. John, you were on the call last night. I remember your name. Carrie, how did the call with the BBC documentary producer go? Awesome. Great question. Uh, I didn't have that call yet. So I think I just announced that this morning. Uh, I chatted with him via email and we scheduled it. He's, he's living out in Denver. So next week, Wednesday, I have a call with him. And he's a documentary filmmaker. And he sent me a pretty detailed email. And it was, very, it was a very good email. He was talking about the importance of production quality on documentaries. And he's worked on several documentaries through the BBC. And so I'm very interested in talking to him. I've said this before, I've done 514 YouTube videos. I've done probably a thousand Amazon videos. And a couple of years ago, my wife Jen and I, we did, uh, we've actually put together an animation for a website customer we had. And we were able to get the animation. um, I think we got it on Netflix for a while, but then it was on Amazon Prime. So I I have experience with this to some degree. We also own the movie theater and it would be awesome once the carnivore diet movie is done to showcase it here at the theater. But um, the other parts of it, I'm obviously not a documentary filmmaker and that's an art and a science to itself and I wanna do it justice. So that's why I'm gonna be talking uh, to this gentleman uh, who was a documentary filmmaker. And I'm looking for other people too that are experts in the area. I talked to another gentleman this morning that was just awesome. He was a very good photographer. And he said to me, I am a carnivore and I love what you're doing. And if I have to come sweep the floors, I don't care. I want to participate and help in any way I can. So I'm like, that's awesome. I really appreciate it. So I'm following up with him because there's a lot of uh, a lot of tedious work going through all of these entries. There's only like 60 or 70 at this point, but it's they're coming in really quick. And I'm trying to be respectful. I, I appreciate everyone submitting those. So I'm trying to put some processes in place for those. But uh, great question, John. Thank you. Let's see what other register what other questions we have here. Carnivore Ron, congratulations to all who have lost weight on Carnivore. Absolutely. Congratulations to all on Carnivore. I say period because uh, it takes a lot of courage to be able to go on Carnivore and make that. It's a scary thing. It's uh, you're going against everything we know when we're living in a world where basically Everybody's addicted to sugar and carbs and processed food. And you go to the grocery store and it's down every aisle. And I've said this before, but grandma's given the sugar to the children and it's a reward for everything. I really think in 30 years from now, we're going to look back and be like, what the heck were we doing with that sugar? It's basically a drug that lights up your brain on an MRI like a hard drug would. And we're, we're rewarding everyone with it. And so to be able to overcome that, like Sean from Intentional Carnivore, Got so much respect for him. It's just to be able to overcome that in a world where it's everywhere and you're seeing it. Because imagine if you were addicted to a hard drug and you came, you overcame that hard drug. Of course, that would be one of the hardest things to do in the world. But now imagine if you went to the grocery store and that hard drug was in every single grocery product that you looked at and there's little kids doing the hard drug and everywhere you go, there's people are doing the hard drug. Be able to overcome that and be a carnivore in this world is an amazing feat. So... Yeah, huge, huge respect and congratulations to everyone that's uh, been able to do that. And uh, again, the, the weight, the weight is of course amazing, but uh, as my friend Sean says, it's the non-scale victories that I have been really eye-opening to me. I said it before, and I'll say it again. I'm down over 40 pounds now on carnivore. I'm down 80 pounds since my heaviest, and that was doing a little bit of keto over the years, on and off. I would, uh, I would gladly weigh 80 pounds more than I do right now. If, uh, if I still had all of the other advantages I've had from doing the carnivore diet. 
The biggest one being my sleep. I've, I've said it a million times, but again, there's a lot of new people on here that have never heard my story before. The sleep, the sleep has been absolutely amazing for me. Life-changing. I get up every morning now at 5.30 in the morning, got my shoes off. I go outside. I take my dog Baxter with, and I walk around the yard with no shoes on. I do stretches. I, I get up. I let the sun hit me first thing in the morning. That's my new rule. I've been doing these little weird challenges within carnivore, but my new thing for a week now is no light can hit my face or eyes. Nothing. It can't be light from my phone or the bathroom light or the bedroom light. It can only be sunlight in the morning. That's the first thing I've been doing every morning. And like the circadian rhythm or whatever, I don't know what's going on. I mean, it's been great since I started carnivore, but now kind of upping it, getting all that sunlight has, uh, it, it's, it's been a game changer. So, okay, let me see some of these questions here. I want to Jennifer Elaine, I wonder if you'd want us to create a channel and post a 60 minute video there. Yeah, that might be a very good idea. Yeah. So that's what I was thinking. Everyone that's participating, they'll provide a video. And that's kind of where I'm stuck at right now. Sure, they could send me the video via email. They could maybe put it on a Google Drive, but it's very time consuming even to open a Google Drive and have it all load up. So maybe if we did it as like a a YouTube channel or some streaming service where we could load it up. There's got to be something out there to kind of collaborate on this sort of thing and keep it organized. Uh, great suggestion, Jennifer. I'm going to dig into that more. That's kind of where I'm at right now too on this project is I want to uh, put some procedures and processes in place to make sure that this is organized going forward. And something like this would be a huge time saver. So I'm going to dig into this. Uh, I'm going to dig into this more. Robert. Roberta, sorry, where do you buy your meats? Sure, so for myself, we are very fortunate and very blessed and very thankful. I live right down the road from a farmer and uh, we've been going to church with these guys for years. They're great. And they, uh, they have their own beef cattle. It's all grass fed, it's organic. And it's awesome because I drive past their fields every day. And in fact, we were putting a new roof on the movie theater last week and I had my Amish friend helping me and we had to head back to my house to pick up um, some rope. And we drove past the field and my Amish friend, he said, you know, whoever that farmer is right there, he's doing one heck of a job. And I was like, well, that's an interesting observation. Like, do you even know the guy? And he's like, no, but I drive by here because he, he does tree cutting services around here. I drive by here often and he's like, I'm always seeing him rotating his cattle from field to field to field. And I'm like, you're absolutely right. I get stuck coming home and going there because they're taking the cows across the field to the next field. And so that's where I get my meat from. About three weeks into doing carnivore, I I'm so lucky. I saw on Facebook, they opened a farm store. So they've sold their meat before, like you could buy a whole cow, but they actually opened a farm store. I can walk there from my house and they sell beef, farm fresh eggs, pork. They sell everything. Again, it's organic, grass-fed, ridiculously awesome prices. And I did a video on it a while back, so I, I can't, I don't have the link here, but if you check my channel, you can see, I think it was actually called, Where Do I Buy My Meat From? And I took you into their store and showed some of the prices were amazing. I think it was like $8 a pound for uh, T-bones or something like that. I think they since raised their prices slightly because after I did that YouTube video, she called me and thanked me. It wasn't my intention, but she's like, we just got a huge rush of people. We've got people calling and saying, can you ship us the, the, the meat? So the demand goes up, the price goes up slightly, but I've been buying a, a, a lot of my meat from there. And then the other place before that, I would get it from Costco. And if you're new to my channel, it sounds like Roberta, you're new to the channel. Uh, my daughter, Emma is a vegan uh, for five years and she quit 29 days ago. She became a carnivore. She completely switched over and uh, she is... I can't believe she's hitting day 30 tomorrow, but I, I call her the compassionate carnivore. She was a vegan because she's compassionate for animals. She will not touch or eat anything unless she knows where it came from. In fact, right across the street from the movie theater, there's a little gas station. Every now and then they have these hard boiled eggs. And if I'm just need a quick snack or something and I wasn't prepared, I'll grab some of those. Emma refuses to eat those. She's like, I don't know where they came from. She, um, she'll, she'll only eat the meat or eggs if she knows that it was humanely raised. And Costco has a pretty good track record for humanely raising their meat. Um, they've got some statements and things like that on their website. And you really, you got to be careful and you really got to be a, uh, kind of a detective and look into everything. But um, that's mostly where we get it. We get it locally 
or we get it from Costco. And if you guys can get it locally, I highly recommend looking into it. I know, I know I'm so fortunate. Some people live in the city, but if I lived in the city and I had to drive even an hour away to get it locally, I would still do it. And you just stock up where we get it from our neighbor. It's all frozen. So I, I, the first time I went there, I just, I was trying to support my friends and my neighbors. So I stocked up for that reason, but also just, Hey, it's frozen. So I might as well have it on hand. I know I'm going to eat it eventually anyway. All right, let's see here. We have another one. Oh, someone did the super chat. So let me see how I can show this one. Here we go. Cove Nation. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. That's awesome. You said, I'm on day six down 18 pounds. Oh, by the way, thank you for the $10. And just so this is clear, every penny of that too is going towards the documentary movie. So I just want that to be totally clear. Uh, I, I so appreciate it. So thank you. I'm on day six down 18 pounds. I carry a lot of water weight. Did you hit a plateau after the water weight stopped? How did you get past that? Great question. So you're down six, day six down 18 pounds. Carry a lot of water weight. Hit a plateau. First, there's a lot that goes on with your water the first week on carnivore. Um, I can't say I hit a plateau those first couple days. And I guess it depends on what you're saying with plateau. If you're weighing yourself, I would be very cautious about weighing yourself. One piece of advice I wish I could go back and do is measure yourself because those measurements will be a, a much better indicator versus the scale. The scale is so tricky, especially that, man, that first week, your water weight will fluctuate so greatly. I mean, I, and I was chugging the water down, so... Otherwise, just in general, in terms of a plateau longer out, one thing, this comment I get all the time, and I always say the same thing, and this is where I'm fortunate because I've done keto on and off for years, and so I've learned what, what I've had the worst plateaus on keto, and the thing that always did it for me was cheese. So I don't know if you're doing cheese or not, but if you are, I would suggest don't do that. And I've had, since I did my 30-day update video, I've literally had thousands of comments. And I, if you guys look, I go through all of the comments. I'm a little bit behind today. I'll, I'll usually leave a thumbs up. And if there's a question, I'll try to hit all of those. So leave a comment if you ever have any questions. But the, one of the big comments I always get is, I'm plateauing. What do I do? And I always say that to them. I say, uh, are you eating cheese? And almost every time it's like, yeah, just a little. And I, well, just stop it and see what happens. Because I think that's one of the big things for a lot of people is cheese. The other thing I'll say... Uh, just to you, Cove Nation, and everyone else, if you're starting and you're in that first week, please, please, please. I have no affiliation with Dr. Barry. If you look at my comments, I have probably 500 comments saying, go watch Dr. Barry's videos. The man's videos are amazing and they're free. I'm not getting anything for promoting them. I'm, the only reason I'm saying it is because that's what ultimately, after watching Frigno Freedom's videos, researching from Dr. Barry's videos is what ultimately convinced me to do carnivore diet. And I get so many comments on here where people are like, that's it, I'm starting, I'm going to go buy some steaks tonight. And it just, it scares the heck out of me. You can't just go buy steak. There's, there's certain things you have to do if you're going to start the carnivore diet. You got to get tons of water. You got to get those electrolytes. You got to be eating certain types of meat and fatty types of meat. And you got to, there's people out there like, oh, I'm going to go get some chicken tonight and I'm just going to eat chicken. I'm like, no, you're going to, you're, you're setting yourself up for failure. And it doesn't have to be that way. And I, I guess I stress this so much too, because I have had the horrible keto flu in years past, but when I started carnivore this time, nothing. When my daughter Lily, she did carnivore, she started it, she had no keto flu, and my daughter Emma had no keto flu, and I attribute that all 100% to Dr. Barry's videos. He's got videos on carnivore mistakes and carnivore 101. Those are two excellent videos, and I swear, like everyone I've talked to, if you follow those things, you're not going to have the, the keto flu. And that sort of first week transition, and I'm not saying Cove Nation, that's what you're having, but that first week, that transition period, usually people are struggling with, maybe they're plateauing, maybe they're carrying a lot of uh, water weight, or maybe they're uh, having the keto flu. So getting those electrolytes, and I use the, I'm not affiliated with these guys either, I'm not getting anything, but I've used the keto chow drops. I know Dr. Barry talked about those before, just some drops you put in your water. And the first week I told Emma and I told Lily, I was like, you just drink an insane amount of water, way more than you'd ever think. And sure enough, none of the three of us had any keto flu. And it, it, the keto flu can be horrible because you're, you're already struggling a lot. Like, hey, this is crazy. I got to switch my whole diet. I got to eat meat. And now you got the flu on top of it. 
aches and pains and exhaustion and fatigue and headaches and it can be avoided so try to avoid it if you can the other dr berry video i always talk about again there's a lot of new people here if you guys want to smile on your face go after this and watch dr berry's video on reversing type 2 diabetes two million views two thousand comments and almost every comment is dr berry you saved my life thank you you saved my life another comment was after going to the doctor for 10 years for type 2 diabetes, they did nothing for me. And I watched one of your uh, videos, Dr. Barry, and it's completely changed my life. My A1C went from this to this, and I've reversed type 2 diabetes, and you saved my life. That man, Dr. Barry, I'm telling you, he deserves so much more recognition. He deserves like a Nobel Prize or something. If, if, you, could, if you could calculate the sheer number of people that he has saved or helped or turned their life around when they were in misery and they're rolling around on an electric wheelchair at Walmart because they can't even walk anymore. Now they're, they're running in the gym. Because of Dr. Barry, man, that guy deserves so much, so much recognition. All right, there's a lot of comments here. Let me see what I can get. Sorry, I'm talking too much here. Let's see here. Colleen, I'm in my 60s. I think it'd be cool if we could crowdfund our own carnivore fast food franchise. Yeah, wouldn't that be something? Yeah, there's, um, for fast food, I don't know what you guys are doing. I That's one cool thing with carnivore, though, is I used to go out to eat way too much, and I used to think about food way too much, and it was always, what are we going to eat? Where are we going to go? What are we going to do? What's for breakfast? I mean, even just cooking dinner at home, it was 50 different ingredients, but very rarely do I get fast food now, but my go-to when I've been in a pinch has been uh, Culver's, and I'll order two patties or three if I'm very hungry, plain, no bun, bacon and then extra bacon on the side and those are 100 percent beef patties i i think uh there's a couple other fast food places that do it too but yeah that would be awesome i've said the same in years past about uh keto if you did a really good keto restaurant uh man i think i think there's a good concept for that because you go to costco nowadays and there's so many keto options and a lot of those are horrible uh that's a whole other story but the keto products and the keto ice cream and the keto bread but there's so many out there, so there is a demand for it. So yeah, in a big city, if you could have a really good keto restaurant, and then I would prefer a carnivore one, but maybe a keto one with some carnivore options, that'd be amazing. Carnivore Ron, two-hour workout this morning, deadlifted today. That's amazing. Yeah, if you guys want to learn more about Carnivore Ron, I did a video with him, but he started his own YouTube channel, 71 years old, uh, doing carnivore for five years now, and... He is reversing aging at 71 years old, running circles around all of his friends. Here we go from Nick. Getting rid of sugar has been the hardest part for me. Amen, Nick. I hear you. I feel you. And don't feel bad. It's not you either, my friend. It's sugar is a drug and you've been addicted to it since you were a child. And everywhere you go, everyone's taking it. So it is one of the hardest things. But I will tell you this. It's not going to be hard forever. When you get over that sugar craving and addiction and you get into that deep ketosis, I never think about it anymore. On the other hand, and that's, that's a very important point too, that's why I never cheat. And again, I'm not judging anybody. People slip up. Some people are more flexible than I am and they could have a little, some strawberries here or there. But I, for 79 days, I haven't cheated. I haven't had one blueberry, one strawberry, one carb, one piece of sugar. Because for me, I will go back down that rabbit hole. For me, it's like cocaine. I quit cocaine after 42 years of taking it. This is an analogy, by the way. I didn't really do any hard drugs. But I, I look at sugar just like it's the same thing as a hard drug. So if I was able to give up a hard drug after 42 years, I'm not going to go and just be like, oh, I'm just going to have a little bit of it. But uh, my point is getting over that addiction, it's, it's a huge thing. Once you get over it, and other people, please feel free to comment. It's hard to believe, but you will not think about it anymore and you will not have those cravings anymore. I'm working in a movie theater. There's just a bunch of candy up there and a bunch of junk food and um, the popcorn too is what I thought would get me. I have no cravings for any of that anymore. Oh, and one other note on the movie theater. I got some good comments, people calling me out like, how dare you, you're still selling popcorn and, and candy and soda. And it's funny because when they left me that comment, I was pouring a soda for a young man that day and I was thinking, I was looking at it and I was looking at him and I was just thinking, man, I kind of, I feel bad about this. I feel guilty about this, but I don't know what to do about it. And my thing is, if we were to not sell popcorn and candy and soda at the movie theater, we would go bankrupt. We would 
shut down. We don't make any money on the tickets. A lot of people don't realize that about movie theaters, but um, for a typical movie we're playing, the studios get the majority of those ticket prices. And our ticket prices are the lowest in the country. Our ticket prices are $5 a ticket here at Montello Theater. And it's my goal to keep it that way forever, even if I never make a penny. We've been running the place for nine months, and my wife Jen and I haven't taken a penny out of it. And we could have. We've been doing very well. Um, but I, I want to be able to keep those prices fair for people. But if we didn't sell concessions, we would be out of business. And I thought about it more, and I'm like, it's not my position to limit this stuff from other people. I totally disagree with it. I totally think it's a bad idea. Um, I don't think I'm, I, I don't know. I, it's a quandary, and I'm still thinking about it. But my thought is, I can't change other people. So I'm going to be the best example I can. If they see me and they say, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm not eating that stuff. I'm eating this stuff. Um, and then maybe they can learn from my example. But ultimately, they have to decide whether they want to eat popcorn or candy. And if I stop selling it, they're going to go to the gas station or the other movie theater. They're going to get it somewhere else. What I have done in the meantime, and I got a video. We'll, we'll show you this. Just yesterday, we added a whole bunch of uh, zero sugar um, keto-friendly snacks to the theater. And I want to move to carnivore next, but uh, we've got these, uh, they're grass-fed beef sticks. They're in different flavors. They're like a half a carb. And I'm trying to get more carnivore, but if, if you guys look out there, you'll know there's not a lot of fully carnivore snacks. Um, myself, personally, I rarely snack on carnivore. I'm just not hungry. I eat a steak and I'm not hungry again. But you have like your carnivore snacks and carnivore crisps and those things. Those are zero carb, but those are like $40 a bag. Nobody's going to buy those at a movie theater. So I just wanted to do a little update on that. Uh, taking baby steps. So we're offering keto snacks here at the movie theater and i'm gonna i'm testing out some more things this week so that's been my compromise on that front but good question nick getting rid of sugar is hard but i promise you my friend it will get a lot easier and you'll never want to look back let's see what other questions do we have here we have one from mr richard daisy b yes there are lots of ranchers farmers where i am that raise cattle but i can't buy the beef from them stupid government yeah i hear you richard i hear you very well my friends down the road that are selling beef i've been going to church with them for eight years now and i remember when we first moved here year one or two they were trying to sell their beef and they just ran into problem after problem after problem and i think it quite literally took them seven or eight years in order for them to figure out a way that they were allowed to eventually sell it um, i just hate that like i understand there's got to be regulation and things like that but if i'm going to go buy beef from a farmer on the side of the road can't that just be an agreement between me and that person that doesn't have to involve the government i am fully taking the risk and if i buy that in some bad meat or there's something wrong with it that should be between me and them and then i could sue them or something like that but i mean i get it for regulations on larger things or if it's being sold in a grocery store but there's things like that drive me insane uh let's see what else do we have here Vincent took me 10 days to lose the extreme moods coming off the sugar. Yeah, I remember that for myself. The thing that happened, I don't know if this was your case, Vincent, but once you get through those 10 days, or for some people it's less or a week, the moods, they just go like this. My mood on carnivore has been amazing. I'm motivated. I'm happy. Every day that I sit down and eat my big steak for the day or the ground beef or the eggs or whatever, I've always, I've got a smile on my face and the mood is just so much better. And not just, not that it's just better. There's good and bad times, obviously, but it's much more balanced and it's because you're not having those crashes. So before you'd eat breakfast, right? And then two hours later, whoosh, your insulin levels are going up and down like a roller coaster. And then you got to eat your granola bar snack and then lunch and you're just going up and down. And it's, uh, it's so much better on carnivore with a nice balance. Let's see, what other questions do we have here? Okay. Overcoming the sugar carb addiction was maddening. Yeah, it's tough. Just think about it. You guys, we've been addicted to that stuff since we were children. Um, but not since we were babies. I heard someone leave a comment the other day. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. They were talking about when a baby is still breastfeeding they're basically ketogenic so we come into this world and we're pretty much starting out at ketogenic and then we switch over to the to the sugar here we go 
someone said, Donald, here we go. Sorry, this is going a little slow for me. Donald said, with pitcher be- with before pitchers especially get intentional carnivore. Yeah, yeah. I mentioned that to Sean yesterday, and he was like, yeah, I'll do it. Showing before and after pitchers. That's what I want to do on the documentary. I want to follow them for a year and help make sure we're getting all those pictures and measurements along the way. But yeah, people that have already done the journey that have documented it well um, would also be good candidates like uh, Sean from Intentional Carnivore for sure. We could call it beef stock. Oh, someone mentioned uh, Woodstock for Carnivore. We could call it beef stock. That's funny. That's awesome. Speaking of calling it things, that was another post I had was I posted, what should we call the carnivore diet documentary? So my website is obviously very generic and that's not going to be the name of it, carnivore diet movie. Uh, I did a post the other day and I had a bunch of comments for uh, movie names, documentary names post the see. other day and I had a bunch of comments. Oh, let's see here. Sorry about that. Let's see here. Carnivore revolution was one. Return to our roots, carnivore odyssey. Uh, there was a lot of good ones on here and I'm starting to put these into a spreadsheet, destroying disease. Um, the problem and the tricky part is some of these might be trademarked or taken already. Uh, someone mentioned the carnivore cure. That one is already taken, of course, already, but that one would have been awesome. One that's kind of stuck with me has been um, the carnivore movement. I think that's kind of a cool one because it's like, wait, there's a movement going on and it kind of goes back to that thing of, yeah, there's a lot more people doing carnivore than you probably realize. But hey, if you guys got more suggestions for I for names for the carnivore diet documentary, please post them here. Um, or you can post them on the blog that we have set up. There's a little comment section on there as well. Someone said reversed was bad. And then they said, I think they should have had Dr. Barry a lot more in it. I wasn't too impressed. Yeah. I, uh, Hey, I'm just happy when anything is out there talking about carnivore more, but, uh, I've heard similar again. I, I can't judge it. I've only watched two of the episodes. I intend to watch, uh, more of them, but, uh, I, the first episode though, the thing that got me was I wasn't hooked into it initially. So I think, uh, that's something I, I I've taken away is I'm hoping on our carnivore diet documentary that, uh, I can have a better hook. Like imagine the hook being Sean from Intentional Carnivore lost 243 pounds on this. That's going to grab people's attentions and want to pull them in. And then you switch to someone else that maybe had type 2 diabetes. I went from A1C of this to A1C of that. That's going to hook and pull someone in. So that's uh, something I kind of took away from that. Someone else said it was kind of boring and it needed a lot more. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, Sonia, on the carnivore diet, 37 days. Awesome. Amazing. I'll tell you what, Sonia, uh, for me, everybody's different, but for me, it just keeps getting better. I was only intending to do carnivore for 30 days and then I was going to quit. I was thinking at the beginning, this is crazy. This is insane. And there's no way I'm going to be able to, uh, sustain this. And I'm going to be sick of meat after 30 days. Um, sorry, I'm looking down here because, well, you guys might not mind this. Emma, is texting me right now. I was hoping to have her on this with me. She's on a hike right now. Uh, I'll get back to this in a second. I only intended to do carnivore for 30 days. On day 30, I felt so amazing. Everything was better. My sleep was better. My depression was gone. Anxiety was gone. Uh, these big bags under my eyes started going away. I, I was feeling like a million bucks. I'm like, I'm not stopping. But the craziest thing was like, I remember my 40 day update. I was feeling even better. At one point I did a video, I think it was around day 50 or 60 and I was just driving in the car and I just did a short and I was like, everybody watching this deserves to feel the way I feel right now. I felt, um, I felt euphoric. I felt just amazing. I don't know if it was what I ate or everything was just balancing out, but that was around day 50 or so. And I've had many of those experiences. So day 37 is an amazing achievement. Great job for me. Anyways, it only gets better from there. All right. Let's see here. Oh, we have another super chat. Derek, thank you so much, my friend. I really appreciate it. Just to reiterate again, every penny from these is going towards the carnivore diet movie. So thank you so much. You said second journey down, lost 31 pounds the first time last year, got in a nasty car accident, put the weight back on plus 10 pounds back on again. Second week, this week down 11 pounds on to 165. 
Awesome, man. Sorry to hear about the car accident, but you know, I am so happy for you because just think about it this way. You are a veteran. You've already done this. So I, that's the hardest part for people. This is crazy. This is insane. How am I going to do it? And now your body has kind of been through this before. I've noticed myself personally been in and out of keto so many times. I get in keto so easily. And so you got this, brother. 10 pounds down, back on it again. Second week, this week, down 11 pounds already. Awesome, man. You got it. Good for you. Don't get in any more car accidents after this now. You got you to gotta do this. Think long term lifestyle change so that's amazing thank you so much for the super chat too really appreciate it oh God, we're getting a lot of reverse comments sorry i didn't mean to draw anything i i, I haven't watched the whole thing yet Hor horrific camera work for reversed amateurs you know that's that's i'll share one other thing so the documentary filmmaker i talked about he mentioned the very same comment um that mandatory myocarditis just mentioned um that they could have had a better production quality so that's why I was kind of more interested in talking to him too, because it's, it, I get it, man. It's hard and it's very expensive to do something like that. So I'm just, I'm stoked that they were able to do, do something at all. But, um, I really want to make sure that we can learn from this and, and do the best job we possibly can. As I always say to my, my girls, if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. I don't want to be the hindrance to this, uh, carnivore diet documentary. I want to do the absolute best documentary we can. So Oh, wow, lots of comments here. Let's see. Lots of reverse comments. Someone said it needed more editing. Yeah. I, I can see on that one too. Just the coherent part I could see. Because like I said, that was, you got to hook people in right in the beginning. And I think there's, there's so many good hooks with carnivores, like just show a before and after picture, show some of these amazing results like Dr. Barry's seen with people with diabetes, hook them in and get the interest and then jump into it. But I wasn't personally hooked in. I continued watching that first episode, but I, I didn't get, didn't get that big hook. Let's see. What else do we got here? I can't believe how great your kids are doing. Emma looks fantastic. Her hair is beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so proud of Emma and Lily. Lily's still doing carnivore. She never wants to be on camera or have anything to do with it. That's why you never see her. And I respect that. Emma, on the other hand, is fine with it. In fact, she wants to document her journey more. Emma's killing it. And tomorrow is her day 30. And I'm having so much fun with this. It's a couple levels. So I, I really, I don't want to make this into like a psychiatry thing here. But when Emma was younger and the girls were younger, I just wasn't there for them a lot because I had horrible depression. And I'm not making an excuse for it. I fully own up to it. But um, on carnivore, I'm the complete opposite. So I'm much more present and I'm much more there and I'm much more in the moment. That combined with just kind of this camaraderie I've got with Emma now and Lily uh, doing carnivore, uh, it's, it's, it's been awesome. The last couple days, usually every other day I'll eat uh, bacon and eggs for breakfast and then I'll have like a small, some burger patties or something small. And then the next day I'll skip the bacon and eggs and I'll have like a big ribeye or steak. Emma's been cooking it up for me every day. I'm like, what is it, my birthday or something, man? And that's one thing when you become carnivore too, your cooking skills. That girl can cook some eggs and bacon just perfectly. Um, but the steak too, man, we've been putting out some really amazing steaks. So it's been awesome. And yeah, you mentioned her hair too. That's funny because she's like most teenagers, she had really bad acne and a lot of that's clearing up every day more and more. And then her hair too, she keeps saying the same thing. She's like, my hair feels so much better. She she even she found some other old pictures from when she was vegan before, and you could just her hair was just like dry and like dead looking. I was I was just I was saying to her the other day I was like think about this Emma before when you were vegan. My goodness, what a change! She was constantly napping before, just always tired and fatigued. I'm like ah oh, you know it's a teenager or whatever, but man I just feel horrible that I didn't I I, I get this comment and I take ownership for it. I should have stopped her a long time ago being vegan and just so you're aware i tried so many times her mom tried so many times friends family tried so many times but that kid is so bullheaded and this is like the one thing like she's people are like dude she's your kid just make her do it i probably should have but this was the one thing where i kind of drew a line in the sand and i'm like this is kind of like an ethical thing the whole reason she started being vegan was she watched this horrible documentary where they were torturing chickens and i agreed with her it's horrible i don't support that at all I told her though, not everybody treats chickens that way. That's a rare thing you're looking at. Um, but 
on the on the flip side i wasn't that very same day going to be like now here eat some chicken you're going to do it now i'm like and in my head i was like she's not going to stick with this vegan thing she's going to do it for a little while it's going to be a fad maybe it'll last a week and then she'll be back on it but that kid has some determination which is why i'm she's good she's good for carnivore now too because she uh she took so much abuse being on uh vegan over the years like i felt bad for the kid after a while too like every time you go to a family get together or something just everyone why why are you doing that why are you eating that just harassing her and now i get it on carnivore too like oh you don't need any vegetables oh you're only eating meat you're gonna have a heart attack so this poor kid's getting it on both ends but she's a veteran at dealing with people bashing her her diet so yeah she's doing awesome uh she wants to do a 30-day update video we have a video uh it's almost all emma she did the other day uh carnivore snacks that we have at home and there's six different ones and there's some cool ones in there and it's it's mostly her we did a live stream too and i, I wanted to mention this quick a couple of people commented and they're like dude stop interrupting emma so i wanted to apologize for that because i was interrupting her but i also wanted to provide some context on that just real quickly emma's not entirely she's 15 she's not entirely comfortable being on camera and so you guys don't see what's off camera but a lot of times off camera she's like you're gonna help right you're gonna jump in right so she sometimes she's like a deer in the headlights and she's awesome she's doing a great job she's getting a lot more comfortable but uh, i have interrupted her at times and just so you guys know part of that wasn't me being a jerk but it was me looking at my daughter as a deer in the headlights where she's kind of looking at me like hey jump in here but i did i did indeed interrupt her a couple times this thing's tricky man you get 400 comments in here and you're trying to look at the comments and trying to ask emma a question but she's going to be doing a 30-day update soon so that should be awesome all right man a couple of, wow more super chats thank you guys so much john again ten dollars thank you man how about naming the movie the meat of the matter oh we got some alliteration in there that's cool i like it i like it that could, well, you know one thing too is putting carnivore in there is going to scare some people they might immediately get turned off and a couple of people have mentioned that too like how can we get a title without and this one achieves it i'm gonna have to put all these i'm gonna I, I've been collecting all of these from the comments. So I'm going to have to put all these in a spreadsheet or something. We're going to have to figure this out. This is one of the tougher decisions. So, uh, But thank you, John. I really appreciate it. Jim, $20 super sticker. Awesome. Thank you so much. Again, every penny going towards carnivore diet documentary. Really appreciate it. Leslie Ann is on here too. Let me see. I got to get some Leslie Ann ones. Here we go. Leslie Ann, I wanted to personally thank you. Leslie has been commenting on my videos and Sean's videos, and I really appreciate it. You've had so many thoughtful comments. You've made my day several times. And um, like I said, I was only going to do one 30-day carnivore diet video, and now I'm doing many, many, and it's because of comments like Leslie. So Leslie was just, there's still a lot of chatter going on about the reverse series. So she says it felt kind of like an AA meeting. I felt that too. Yeah. It was kind of like a group get together. Like let's have a heart to talk, heart, heart to heart. So, uh, thank you, Leslie. Really appreciate all your comments. Okay. Rod says I'm doing keto. I stalled at weight loss. Will carnivore help? I think so. For me, it did. And for many others that I know it did help. Uh, for me, I've learned that, I mentioned this earlier, but the cheese stalled me, my weight loss, no matter what I would do. Um, and also nuts. I get those mixed nuts from Costco and I'd always end up eating too many of those. So cheese and like nuts would always stall me on keto. I can tell you this on carnivore, I've never seen anything like it, but if you graph my weight loss, and again, it's not good to, good to go off the scale, but if you do every couple of weeks, it's fine. I'm on day almost 80 now, but the weight loss on keto for me, you could graph it and it would be a perfect line. There's none of this uh, that I had on keto. So uh, my only other advice, Ron, is if you're going to do carnivore, you're, you're kind of good because you've already done keto. So now you're just going to advanced keto, but watch those Dr. Berry videos. Just do yourself a favor. Watch the carnivore mistakes video. Save you a lot of trouble and it really helped me up. Let's see. What other questions? Man, we got so many. I'm so far behind on this. Uh, Hey, quick question while I'm looking for another comment. Has anyone made homemade bacon? I just picked up uh, pork belly from Costco. And of course, I want to do it properly. And I don't want, I'm not, obviously, I'm not going to put any sugar on it. Uh, so I was going to do salt and duck fat. Now it's going to try to smoke it, but I don't know if I have to cure it first. I keep looking for a recipe. And every darn recipe I look at, 
uh, ends up having sugar and junk in it. I just want salt, duck fat. I want nothing else. If anyone's done that, please leave a comment. Uh, let's see here. Oh man, we got a bunch more super chats. This is amazing. Thank you guys so much. This is unbelievable. Jonas, $9.99. Thank you so much. I'm presently 525 pounds considering carnivore and in dire need of a change for my well-being. My mom is a fan who pointed me to your stream today. How do I put my hand in for this project of yours? Oh, awesome. Man, 525. Jonas, I feel for you, brother. First of all, I hope you've seen some of uh, Intentional Carnivore's videos, Sean's, because that man lost 243 pounds, and he did it in a year. So there's some inspiration for you. You got to go check out some of his videos. How do you put your hand in for the project? You just did. That's awesome. And then the other way you can do it is uh, if you just go over to Carnivore Diet Movie, and there's a little thing that says register to participate. It's just a quick form. If you fill that up and just put, put your name on there too, obviously, Jonas, that I've talked to you here. So I'll put a little, I'll put a little note next to it. And yeah, I'd love to, ch I'd love to chat with you more. Uh, again, do your research. That's my biggest advice for people. Watch some of those Dr. Berry videos. Uh, they're, they're life changing for sure. This is crazy guys. I I'm new to this. I've been doing YouTube for eight years, only been doing live chat for a couple of weeks now and all these super chats coming through this. It means a lot. Thank you. And again, if you're just jumping on the stream and you're new, every penny from these is going towards the carnivore diet movies. Uh, we want to help people. Run far away from the Black Horse, $20. Thank you so much. Your videos have inspired me to go from keto to trying carnivore. I will post and keep you up to date. Keto took me from 250 to 219. Congratulations, man. That is huge. That sounds very similar to me. I was at 260 at my heaviest. I'm at 180 now. So I'm down 80 from my heaviest. And a lot of that was from keto in the early days. And I want to see what carnivore can do to get me across the goal line. 185. You sound just like me. So we're very similar, my friend. Uh, 185 was my goal weight for years. And quick story on keto, I could never get it. I was always at like 189 or 188 and I hit a brick wall. And I tell you guys, I tried everything. I cut out the cheese, the nuts, and on keto, I couldn't get down to that 185. And uh, I did a three day water fast, just drank water, nothing else. I'm like, I'm going to do whatever I can to get down to this 185 on keto. I'm going to fast for three days. That didn't work. And then a while later, I did a five-day water fast. I ate no food. I just drank water for five days. My body just held the weight and was like, nope, not going to do it. I could not get under that 185. Long story short, uh, I weighed myself this morning. I'm 181. And I am on my way to in the 170s, which I don't ever remember looking at a scale when I was in my 170s. That had to be like back in high school or something. So I, you can do it, man. And you've already done keto and lost a bunch of weight and had success. Uh, watch the Dr. Barry videos, carnivore mistakes to uh, avoid, uh, 10 carnivore mistakes to avoid. I think that's one of his. He's got another one, carnivore 101, but man, those videos, they're life-changing. Keep me posted for sure. Uh, you guys like leave comments on my YouTube videos and I'll see it. Just be like, hey, we talked on the live chat or um, you guys can email me too. If you go to my YouTube page on the about page, I've actually have my email in there. So Run far away from the black horse. Keep me posted. Maybe we can have you as part of the carnivore diet movie as well. Awesome, man. That's so cool. Here we go. David Voss. Thank you so much for that super chat. Hello from Australia. Way to go. Love your channel. Thank you so much, David from Australia. Been getting a lot of comments from folks in Australia. That's really cool. Derek Gilbert became a YouTube member. Thank you, Derek. That is awesome. If you guys aren't familiar with a YouTube membership thing, it's right below usually the video. There's a little join thing. And we have a couple different levels. And you can join and become a member. And just like the Super Chats and the T-shirts and the GoFundMe, every penny from that goes towards the Carnivore Diet documentary. And you get a lot of perks and things that other people don't. So, for example, Emma's posted several things in uh, to our members. Like, um, hey, this is what I'm eating today. Or here's an update. She's got another big one coming tomorrow as well. And I've posted updates like the the rough draft outline I did for the movie, uh, all of the members got to see that first. So you get some, you get some perks if you join, but you're also, you're helping us out because uh, all that money go to goes towards the, the movie. So here we go, Patricia. I'm really sorry, guys, if I miss your question here. This is kind of overwhelming now. There's so many. Uh, Patricia Johnson, I did keto for a year. My mistake was buying keto products. My heaviest was 286 and I'm at 174 right now. Congratulations, Patricia. And I feel you on the keto products. 
if you guys are new to my channel, I apologize, but I've said this before. I used to joke around with people like a year ago. I was like, man, you kids got it so easy these days with all these keto products. You got your keto bread, your keto tortillas, your keto ice cream. I had none of that when I started 15 years ago. And it's true, I didn't. But in retrospect, those keto products killed me. I kept doing the keto tortillas and I would get the worst inflammation. And I, I don't know, I can't pinpoint it because on keto, I was eating so many various things. I ate mostly just salad every day, salad for lunch, salad for dinner, uh, low carb veggies and some meat. But I would have those tortillas and every now and then I'd have a keto snack and it stalled me. It caused inflammation. I don't know. Those keto products are not a good thing at all. Thank you, Patricia, for your comment. Derek, back on carnivore again, two weeks down, 11 pounds. I'm heading below 200 this week. Heading to the hundreds. Good job, man. That's going to be a huge achievement when you look at that scale and you're down into the 100s. Let's see. I want to make sure I didn't miss any of these here. Okay, we got another one here. Thank you so much. Jujube, $24075. I cure and smoke my own bacon. Serious Keto has a great cure recipe. Oh, thank you so much. You can add whatever spices, no sugar. I have nine pounds as we speak. Awesome. Yeah, I just, I saw it at Costco, the uh, pork belly, the big thing. And I'm like, this is it. We've been buying bacon from, um, well, my neighbor sells some of it, but Costco. And I get the zero carb stuff, but there's, oh, it's bacon is so tricky. And I, in fact, I was going to do a challenge, but I'm like, I've heard so many people talk about making your own bacon. And I have a big Yoder smoker at home. Emma and I have been, sm we smoked up the most, I did a video on it. I don't know if you guys saw it, but I smoked a ribeye that was this thick and it was the most amazing piece of meat I've ever eaten. It was so delicious. I smoked it on low and slow, 200 degrees till I got it to 125 degrees internal temperature. And then I took it inside to the cast iron skillet, seared that thing in tallow. I put the fat side down of the steak first, so it was seared it in fat, tallow, and then at the end, I finished it with some uh, Kerrygold butter. And that, my friends, is what Emma and I call our carnivore sauce that you get in the pan afterwards. That stuff is like liquid gold. Pulled the steak off and then poured that sauce over the steak. And the steak was smoked in cherry wood, so it had this little red on it and it had that cherry kind of flavor from the smoke. It was delicious, so thank you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write that down right here. Serious Keto. Because, yeah, I could, not, I, could not find, I could not find a recipe uh, for that. Oh, man, lots of these Super Chats coming in. Chris in real life, thank you so much. Love your content. I would share my journey. I'm getting on to heal insulin resistance, PCOS, and complications of chronic Lyme disease. Name the movie Raising the Stakes on Health. Hey, I haven't heard that one yet. That is awesome. Man, it's going to be so hard to pick a name. I'm going to, I'm, I'm adding all of these up and I'm going to put them in a spreadsheet or somewhere, but I really like that raising the stakes on health and best of luck to you, Chris. I've heard uh, Lyme disease, a couple people commenting. I know uh, a big YouTuber because I'm in the YouTube homesteading space, uh, Justin Rhodes. I know he has Lyme disease and he was on carnivore for a long time. I don't know how that ended. I think he was having pretty good results because I know he was doing it for, for some time. So, uh, OBI Audibility, thank you so much for that $4.99. It's all going towards the carnivore diet movie. And we have another one. Another one, thank you. I do 72-hour fasts, not as productive as I thought. I'm doing Barry and other doctors, but I really think that carnivore is the next evolution of my journey. I have pre-picks. Awesome. Yes, thank you again for another super chat. 72-hour fast, man. Those are serious, serious things. You, you know what? I used to fast before I ever did carnivore. I've heard someone say this, but when you get to like the fifth day in a fast, you start feeling pretty good. It's a weird feeling. Some people feel kind of junky, but I, some people feel amazing uh, on like the fifth day of the fast. And that's how I feel on carnivore every single day. And I heard a doctor or someone say that there's their theory was when you're on carnivore, it's kind of similar to fasting because your body isn't processing a million different ingredients and all that junk and stuff that you were eating before. And something about the way the body, pro the stomach processes meat, maybe it's like a little bit of a different section of the stomach or something. So it's very close to kind of uh, fasting, but uh, yeah. Good job, man. Thank you so much for those super chats. I really appreciate it. Let's see. I I'm so far behind on these. I'm really sorry. I'm going to try to catch up. Beef is the most nutrient dense food on the planet. You'd be eating a lot of lamb. 
Yeah, beef is my go-to. I get that question all the time. What about chicken? What about fish? Yeah, you can do it, but I choose not to. I feel so much better when I'm eating beef. Oh, man, so many comments here. Let's go see. Someone said my video is pixelated. When did that one come through? Oh, wow, I'm so far behind. That was a long time ago. Hopefully the video is no longer pixelated. We got pretty good internet here. Let's see. Low carb carnivore. Oh, awesome. Thanks for commenting. Yes, I think cheese stunts a lot of us. Yeah, I, I hear it over and over again. That's one of the biggest comments. Oh, Cove Nation said, yep, reintroduced cheese last night. I wonder, am I going the wrong way in this thing? No, I'm going the right way here. Sorry, trying to catch up here. Someone said they follow Steak and Cheese Girl. Yeah, she's got an awesome channel. She says that eating liquid fats is what causes diarrhea, so try eating your fats. Yeah, I've heard that too. Makes sense. I, I, my stomach feels so much better on carnivore. The only time I get, get, mess, get, get some issues is uh, if I have way too much fat. Um, but I'm pretty good at regulating that now. Got a couple more of these super chats. Alex, thank you. Meat magic. Oh, man, these are some good ones. Love it, too. I love the alliteration. It's catchy. It's easy to remember. It's short. doesn't have the word carnivore in there, which might scare some people. Although, maybe meat will scare some people, but I, I don't know. I don't care about that. Got another one here. LE59. Oh, day 15 and already less joint pain. Awesome. Good for you. That was a game changer for me. I, I mentioned it briefly. The arthritis I had in my toe is completely gone. That's been a game changer. But the other big thing that these little ailments that I lived with for years that became normal, the big one was my elbows. This, I, I had sore elbows all the time. And then my lower back every night for years, I'd say to my wife, could you just rub my back? It never got better. I have no lower back pain whatsoever on carnivore. I think it was a couple weeks in that I noticed the, the lower back pain uh, going away. Run far away from horse. Another one. Thank you so much. I uh, don't know how to contact you with follow-ups. Go on my, um, go, please go on my YouTube channel on the about page. If you look on that page, you can actually get my email address. If you email me right there, just say you're, you're run far away from black horses. I have a carnivore brain now, like a steel trap. I will remember it, and we can follow up from there. And thank you so much for all those super chats. Yeah, carnivore Pete said, I, that's kind of what I was thinking too. What, don't worry about plateauing after six days. Give it at least 30 days. Very good advice. Yeah, six days is too short. Don't worry about the scale. Measure yourself. Give it some more time. So much happens in that first week with your water weight fluctuating. Carnivore Ron, I don't do fast food. It's been two years since I ate. Awesome. Yeah, it's rare for me too. If sometimes if I'm in a pinch, but um, oh, we got one from I Create Crafts. Let's see what this is. I can't commit to all meat, but you have changed my lifestyle. It was vegetarian for over five years, and now I'm doing keto, slowly adding in meat. You're a lifesaver. I've got a big smile on my face. I don't know. Does anyone know who I Create Crafts is? Uh, that's my wife, Jen. So this is kind of a big announcement here. I wasn't expect. She's upstairs. <laughs> at the movie theater right now on her computer at the concession stand so she's been a vegetarian for five years her and emma were vegan vegetarian for years together and uh no pressure but uh jen she, she she's not going full carnivore which i can't blame her but she's gone from vegetarian and just today she ate some chicken which i was like you want to get this on video this is kind of amazing this would be a good story so maybe we'll have jen in the carnivore documentary but if not she's definitely going to be on the YouTube channel, if you guys don't know it, Jen and I have been together since we were 14 years old, exclusively since we we're 14 years old. And I'm 42 right now. And then uh, at some point, we had triplets. On Sean's, uh, on Sean's uh, live stream last night, someone said to, to me and Sean, they're like, hey, now that you two men are getting so, so handsome and uh, fit and trim, aren't your wife's worried about... Uh, someone else trying to pick you up or something like that and sean and i were both like no i think we're good there i've been with my wife since i was 14 and uh th that's not going to be an issue and i, I kind of jokingly said but it was true it, when jen and i found out we were having triplets we're like we're definitely in this thing for the long run now despite the fact that we've already been together since we're 14 years old so yeah yes good job honey awesome job seriously it's a big change but she's gonna she's already starting to feel better and she wasn't acting like herself for a while there. So 
Uh, man, it's going to be crazy if we can get everyone switched over. I, I, and just to be clear, Jen, you got to leave another comment. I never pressured Emma into doing carnivore. I didn't even pressure Lily, my daughter Lily, uh, that had the open heart surgery. I just told her like, hey, listen, I think that if you eliminate all these other foods, that horrible skin condition, that painful skin condition, HS you've had for years, I think that'll go away. I said, you do what you want. I'm not telling you to do it or not do it. You need to ultimately make your own decision. And uh, Gen 2, I, um, I maybe wasn't as the same way as I was with Emma, but I'm like, look, you gotta, this is, this is working for me. You, you kind of make your own decision. So she's doing it now, which is awesome. So Jen, Jen's going to be on some of the future videos. If you watch Homestead How, you can watch lots of our past videos we've done together on homesteading stuff. Uh, Cove Nation, another one. Man, thank you. Do you lift weights? And have you noticed a difference with carnivore? Also, are you casting for your duck? I'd love to be in it. So here's the thing. I tell everybody, I did a little video on this the other day. I've, I'm down 80 pounds right now from my heaviest. I'm down 40 pounds since I started carnivore 79 days ago. I did none of that with exercise whatsoever. And I've never really lifted weights my whole life. There was one stint for like 30 days where uh, Jen and I did uh, P90X. That was 15 years ago, 10 years ago. Uh, now I, I think maybe around day 50, I did start lifting weights at home. I have excess energy and I've noticed a huge difference. Not to, uh, pat myself on the back or anything, but it just seems like I feel way more muscular and, and like my core is stronger and everything. And, and I, I guess I can't really say cause I wasn't doing it a lot before, but, um, it seems like it's a lot easier to build muscle on carnivore. It makes sense. I mean, a lot of bodybuilders up their protein and things like that. So. And then you said, are you casting for the doc? Absolutely. Uh, you can sign up. Uh, well, first of all, just shoot me an email if you want. On my about page on YouTube, I have my email. But the best thing, please do this for sure, is if you go to carnivoredietmovie.com and then you click on the register to participate, there's a quick little form you can fill up there. And so that's where we're taking people to register. There's some questions about uh, what you're doing and uh, those sort of things. Let's see. But all those not very fit vegans, question mark. Yeah. Um, are you casting for your doc? Yep. Yeah, the very fit vegans. I don't see those too often. Yeah, sorry, I didn't see your earlier comment. I don't see the very fit vegans too often. I know Sean said this the other day. He was like, when are we going to see the vegan video that talks about how they're reversing type 2 diabetes, like Dr. Barry's video that has 2 million views and thousands of comments from people uh, thanking him for saving their life and reversing diabetes. I, I wanna, I'm waiting to see the vegan video like that. The other thing, I'm not, I'm not uh, talking bad about the vegans. I am a little bit, but um, the only reason I do a little bit is because that's the only bad thing on carnivore. I'm getting so many comments from the vegans about how I'm such a horrible person. And I truly, truly, truly believe that carnivore diet is the most compassionate diet there is. Much more compassionate than vegan. I've said it before. I'll say it again really quickly. If you truly are honest about being vegan, you can Google this yourself, everybody, right now. Just Google how many birds died last year due to pesticide poisoning. And the answer is, I think it's 62 million birds die per year from pesticide poisoning so that vegans can eat their multitude of different vegetables. And fox, deer, squirrels, rabbit all die from pesticide poisoning as well. For me, I eat one local cow that I, I drive past every day. I see him in the pasture. He has a good life. He's humanely raised. He has a quick, instant death. And then I get 400 meals from that one cow. You go and eat a salad, on the other hand, how many animals have to die from pesticide poisoning or monocropping or all sorts of other things downstream. So if you choose to be vegan, I'm not judging you at all. I'm, I'm so proud of anybody that says, hey, I'm done with sugar and processed garbage. You do you, I'll do me. The only reason I mention the vegan stuff is because I get so many comments on that. And I truly do believe if people are being honest with themselves, carnivore is the most compassionate uh, diet there is. Someone said sell sell chomps meat sticks they are carnivore approved i gotta check those out i haven't i have um carnivore snacks those are zero carb carnivore approved and i just got a bag of those and then emma took it from me she's on a hike right now so she's testing them out first i was going to try those but those are very expensive i'll have to check into chomps uh for sure 
I love this one. Snacking is for vegans. Yep. That's that should be a t-shirt. That's awesome. Yeah. So you know another thing that rhymes with that? Napping. Napping is for vegans. <laughs> I was joking about that before. There's this guy, this poker YouTuber I watch, and he's he's pretty cool. He's a great poker player, but he's a vegan, and I was saying to Emma, I was like, you know what I noticed when I watch this guy's uh, videos? He's constantly napping. Every time I turn on one of his videos, he's either getting up from a nap or he's down on his third nap. And I'm like, there's a reason for that. I don't nap anymore. I was napping last year. I don't nap anymore. Oh, here we go. Homemade beef jerky is a good snack. I agree. Unfortunately, I can't sell homemade beef jerky here due to the health code stuff. So I got to get something prepackaged. But I'm going to check out those chomps. Man, I'm far behind here. Way far behind. Let's go. Uh, pork rinds are, are a good one. Yeah, pork rinds, you got to be careful. Make sure you check those ingredients, but there's some really good ones out there. I, someone said, okay, here's an important one. Triple bypass five years ago. Worried about going carv carnivore. Yeah, as you should be. Here's my advice for you, my friend. You need to make your own decision. Do your own research. And what I would do if I were you, well, first, what caused you to have that triple bypass five years ago? Were you eating the standard American diet the entire time? Or what were you eating? That's something to think about. But the other thing is, just do your research. There's a lot of really good information out there. It's so hard because your whole life and my whole life, I've been told that meat is going to cause me to die and have a heart attack. And there is so much re research out there now and proof out there now that a lot of what we've been told is completely the opposite from reality. It's completely the opposite. So do your research and make your own decision. One thing I would, I would suggest checking into that's really awesome. Of course, Dr. Barry has so many good videos on this topic. Um, Dr. Philip, Philip Ovadia, he is a heart surgeon and he has a book called, uh, I think it's called stay off my operating room table. And he was carnivore for many years. And I don't know how you could get a better source for, you know, if you're worried about uh, heart disease than a heart surgeon. Um, so he's written a book about it and he's got a YouTube channel and some videos. So start doing your research would be my suggestion. And I would start with Dr. Barry or Dr. Ovadia. I don't like to try to push people in any direction. I'm just putting my example out there. So I've, uh, many years ago, I had a mini stroke and strokes and heart attacks run in my family. And so I did my research and found that a lot of the stuff, in my opinion, uh, we've been misled about. And now I have my own personal experience, although it's anecdotal because it's just for myself, but all of my markers, I, I'm going to get blood work done, but a lot of people don't know this. When you do carnivore, you got to give it a couple months because even now I'm still losing weight and hormones are fluctuating and things like that. So they, they usually suggest don't do your blood work until six months. So I'm going to do that and I'll share it with all of you. But everything I've been able to check, blood pressure, heart rate, I have an extra heartbeat I've had my entire life. Everything is so much better uh, so far. I know it's anecdotal. It's just myself. Uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson said the other day, you know, this carnivore thing is anecdotal until you read my comments and he has probably hundreds of thousands of comments. And he said, this carnivore is no longer anecdotal. It's now a hypothesis when you read so many similar stories of people reversing type 2 diabetes and changing their lives forever on carnivore diet. Carnivore Pete, carnivore diet helped me with a lot of other addictions besides the sugar and carbs, even coffee, only exception cheese. Yeah, you got off the coffee too, though. That's awesome. I know a lot of people do cheese and they tolerate it. So I'm never judging or knocking anyone. I can't do the cheese. No, it, it always uh, stalls me out. Luckily for me, I never was addicted to coffee. My big addiction that was horrible was uh, caffeinated uh, diet soda. Those stupid diet Cokes that are 99 cents from McDonald's. I mentioned this on the live stream yesterday. I used to drive a half an hour to McDonald's just to get, get my fix, uh, my caffeine fix from those things. Uh, I do that no more. Thankfully, the only liquid I drink now is water and I'm happy for it. It's all about sustenance now. It's no longer about entertainment. When I wanted that soda before or the sugar or uh, the cheese, it was like for entertainment purposes and I don't need it anymore. And if I had a little bit of it, I'd want a lot of it. So the Carnivore Collective, that's a cool one too. See, you guys are good at this. I love the alliteration. That was something I was searching for. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take all these. I'm going to put them in a spreadsheet. And some people have sent like ChatGPT. I've been looking on ChatGPT too. So I'll get... It's going to be cool when I have like 50 of these 
you can put it in chat GPT and say, hey, give me a couple more like this or give me some that are alliterative as well. Oh, here we go. Three days into the carnivore diet and I stopped snoring despite being in my 20s. I was experiencing snoring recently, but it's long gone now. Amazing. I, I wish we could do more research on this. That's one of the things that's bad with carnivore is there's no money to be made. When there's research and studies, it's usually because some multi-billion dollar medical company is trying to make some medication that they can get rich off of. I've heard so many reports. Maybe you guys can leave some comments uh, if this happened to you, but I said it before. I stopped snoring on day one. I don't even know how that's possible, but it's true. If Jen's still on here, she can attest to it because she used to punch me every night and say, stop snoring, roll over. The first day on carnivore, I stopped snoring. I'm thinking about it. I'm like, maybe it's because I, I started taking magnesium the first day and some electrolytes. Maybe it was a magnesium deficiency or something that did it because in the past, I was always like, I was snoring because I had a fat neck and I was fat. You lose some weight, you stop snoring. I've had that happen before, but Dr. Jordan Peterson said the same thing. He said the first week he stopped snoring as well. I, I had legit sleep apnea. For those of you that don't know, I, w I did a sleep study. I was using a CPAP machine for years. I would stop breathing hundreds of times throughout the night. Um, and that's all gone on carnivore. And there's a lot of people, I'll, I'm going to say it again real quick because it's so important. There's a lot of people out there that are like, yeah, I get to sleep. Sleep is critical. You get your diet under control. Get your sleep under control. It's so important. And so many people are just like, I got my eight hours. I'm good. It doesn't matter. You can get 20 hours of sleep. It's not going to make a difference unless you get that deep regenerative sleep. Maybe you got 20 hours and you were just snoring and tossing and turning all night. And I'm telling you, man, every night, 79 nights in a row, best sleep of my life. Sleep like a baby. Amazing. Let's see. Got another one here. Oh, Dr. Huberman. Another $20. Thank you so much. His other stuff is pretty awesome. His name is Dr. Huberman. Yeah, I've seen some of his stuff. He, he a couple talks on gut microbiomes and nerves and other pathways between the gut and brain are through the roof. Yeah, I've heard him. He's got some good stuff. And you know, one funny thing, I heard uh, Dr. Huberman on a podcast recently and he wasn't knocking carnivore. I guess he didn't throw his full support behind it, but he was talking about Dr. Baker's amazing results on carnivore and he had some theories on it but uh yeah i haven't seen whether he supports it or not i don't think he's like completely uh supported it but uh he had some interesting takes on on that one. Oh, we got my good buddy here i'm sorry sean you were probably on here a long time ago i sean's way better at this than me great job bert and tina this is sean from intentional carnivore go click on this man's channel and follow him sean lost 243 pounds on carnivore got over horrible depression he's my new best friend he's helped me out I, i'm hoping to have him in the documentary and we just did a live stream together and I, he did a video on my channel before carnivore ron the healing carnivore documentary that's cool too i like it positive uh nine and a half months down 11 100 well i gotta put this one on here adam nicholas nine and a half months in down a hundred i thought it said 11 pounds down 111 pounds, depression gone, inflammation gone. To those just starting out, don't cheat, don't quit. It's worth it. Thank you, Adam. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, man. I get emotional when I read those ones because this man has changed. Like, Adam, what was your life before this, right? I mean, thank goodness you were alive and you had a life, but you, you it's like you're reborn now. You have a whole new life. 111 pounds, depression gone, inflammation gone. Absolutely. Don't cheat and don't quit. It's totally worth it. Couldn't agree more. And congratulations, man. What, what an achievement. I, I just, 111 pounds for you. Amazing. All right, let's see. I got to catch up on some of these here. Let's see what time is it? Wow, we've been going for a while, hour and a half. We got, a, we got more time on the if you guys just jumped in, I'm in a movie theater that my wife and uh, girls and I purchased nine months ago, and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is playing above us. If you hear some crashing sounds and some spaceship and some clapping and cheering, it's a pretty good movie. Uh, I'm sick of it, personally, because we've been showing it for a couple of weekends now. We got it till Thursday, and then we're switching out movies. All right, let me catch up on some of these comments here. I'm so sorry if I missed one of your comments. There's just too many in here. Uh, someone said, Dr. Barry convinced me too. Yep. 
Happy to catch you live. Kimberly, thank you. I've seen many of your comments. I appreciate you. Low Carb Carnivore, love you. Thank you. I've seen many of your comments as well. Kids have to see the light themselves. Yep. Sean, Intentional Carnivore. Sonia, too much fat and you will know it no matter what time, but initially it will be a few days to a week. Yep. Man, the best advice I've gotten is just listen, uh, listen to your body. Sorry, I don't know if I got this one already. Thank you so much, Jim. I, I hope they didn't miss this one earlier. $20 super sticker. Amazing. I got to get caught up on these here. Trying to get to the bottom of this list. I feel bad skipping some of these. Some of these are just nice comments. So I really appreciate all of the nice comments. Here's a question. If I missed your question, maybe repost it. I'm really sorry. I'm going to try to get to all these. Do you do intermittent fasting as well? Yes. Yes, I do. Um... I try to. So I usually do, um, I, I'm kind of weird. I do every other day. A lot of people will do 18 hours no eating and a six hour eating window, sometimes lunch or dinner. I kind of do that. And then um, the next day I'll switch it up a little bit. But uh, huge, huge advantages to doing intermittent fasting. I'm a big fan for sure. You all did great. Emma did great. No complaints. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, it's tough being on this end of the camera with the, all the chats coming through and then trying to manage things, but uh, really appreciate all the nice comments, and so does Emma. Carnivore is the only way. Yes. Someone said, can we keep berries? So for me, no. That would completely kill me. There's carbs in berries. Um, I would advise, like, hey, if you're just jumping in and going to try carnivore, give it 30 days, follow the rules, watch some of Dr. Berry's videos, and zero carb, no berries. I know Dr. Barry, uh, it's so funny, his name is Barry, and we're talking about berries, and we're talking about him eating berries. I heard him say once that uh, every now and then, like once a year, they have berries on their farm, and he'll eat some of those, but he's mostly just carnivore uh, otherwise. But no, if you're going to try to do carnivore, don't do berries, because it'll kick you out of ketosis. They're, they're lower carb. I mean, if you had a couple, you might still be able to stay in ketosis, but for me, I wouldn't do that. I, I tell everyone, you make your own decision for yourself. I stick to zero carb stuff on carnivore. Oh, here we go. Yep, I saw this one. Serious keto. I wrote that down. Thank you so much. Getting caught up here. We got the new member. Um, cut the pork belly. Sorry, I'm stuck in this pork belly. Cut the pork belly into cubes and air fry. Oh, I'm going to try that too. Yeah, the air fryer has been a game changer. Sean, International Carnivore. Call the movie Hopeless, Sick, Tired, and Depressed. Yeah. That'll catch some people. Man, when I, when I tell people, so many people have been so kind. Carrie, you lost so much weight. What did you do? And then I say, well, you know, besides the weight, even more importantly, I uh, got rid of depression, got rid of uh, arthritis, got rid of um, IBS, got rid of heartburn, got rid of all these things. And almost everybody got rid of hopeless, sick, tired, and depressed, got rid of all those things. So many people, four or five different people have said to me, I have all those things too. You sound just like me. I feel so bad because there's so many people walking around with just the same thing. Amanda from Carnivorous Me as Homemade Bacon. Oh, I'm going to check that out. I was just chatting with Amanda and I, uh, she's going to be on my channel. I think it's in two weeks. It was going to be next week and then I had to push it back a little bit. The Bearded Butchers have a good video on curing pork belly with no sugar. Thank you guys. Oh, you guys are awesome. I'm just getting caught up here. Yeah, I kept finding videos and then I'd get into it and it looked like it was keto or carnivore and then they'd put some sugar on it or something. Here we go. I started Carnivore Monday. Congratulations. Awesome. Good job. Stick to it. Stick to it. Don't cheat. You got it. It's going to be, it's going to, it might be tough the first couple of days, but if you get your electrolytes, you follow Dr. Barry's advice. Once you get through those first couple of days, it will be awesome. Okay. Am I almost getting caught up here? Wow. You guys are awesome. This is a lot of fun. I really appreciate all of the comment, comments and inspiration. Oh, here we go. Susan, I will repeat, priceless seeing your daughter's pupils dilating at her first bite of bacon and then to see her transition from quietness to exuberance, beautiful skin. Yeah, it was the same thing. The, you know, I don't know if you guys noticed this too. I joke about it, but it's serious. There's this thing, I call it the carnival, carnivore glow. Carnivore zen, I don't know what it is, but everyone I know that's on carnivore, they have like this glow. And the only time I've ever seen it before I knew anything about carnivore is when you see a pregnant woman just give birth. They have like that glow. It seems like everyone on Carnivore has that. Emma has that glow now. She uh, She's glowing. Yeah, her pupils were dilating. And it's like, it was like a light switch. When she started eating meat after being vegan for so many years, it was like she turned a light switch and you could just see the life come back into her. It was like she was in a desert 
and she was dehydrated and she was starving and all of a sudden she just started chugging the water and the life came back into her and it's been that way for 30 days man she is just just thriving here we go <laughs> someone said i asked my son he suggested my life as a t-rex that's awesome Someone said, I've been on carnivore for 36 days. On Tuesday was the first time I loaded on carbs from veggies. Oh, man. I hope you're doing okay. Maybe there's a follow-up comment when we get down. Let me know how that went. Okay. I, Nina's words. I got to show this one quick. I love ribeye. I am with you. Man, ribeye is just the perfect, perfect food. It's got the right amount of fat. It's got everything we need. Ribeye is definitely my go-to. The other perfect food I have, I'll just mention real quick, is... Uh, Everyone here has heard it. BBBE, right? Beef, butter, bacon, eggs. But I'm going to add something to that. And this has been Emma and my favorite food. BBBE, all in one bowl. That is our go-to food. So we'll take a big cast iron skillet and we'll cook up bacon. We'll, uh, we'll save the grease. I'll cut it up into little slices. And then in a separate pan, I'll cook up some ground beef. I'll try to get most of that fat in there. The first time I foolishly drained some of that away. Cook up the, uh, the beef. And then scrambled eggs over the bacon and the cast iron and then add the beef to it and then put a little bit of butter on the top, mix it all in. You, my friend, now have what we call the carnivore power bowl. And it is the most delicious food ever. And I tell you, talk about carnivore glow. You eat a couple bites of that and you are energized, you are motivated, you are rejuvenated, you are ready to go. You can throw it in the fridge. Emma and I make up huge batches of this stuff. And then if we ever just like, I don't want to make a steak right now. We'll grab some of our, our carnivore power bowl and it is amazing. Let's see what else we got here. A stink ass cat. Love the name. I got a, I got a cat like that at home. $20. Thank you so much. You are starting a channel called gas free carnivore. Awesome. Best of luck to you. And thank you so much for the super chat. You are supporting our carnivore diet movie, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Let's see. What else do we got here? Oh, someone said, I saw your ribeye video. You did a great job. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was fun. I, I, and since that video, I did another uh, thick New York strip. I didn't take that one on video because I was too hungry, and it's a lot of work filming sometimes. I'm like, we're just going to cook up a steak here. Let's see if I can get caught up here. I think I, I, think I hit these already. Call the movie Meat Magic. Day 50. I already did these ones, but thank you guys so much. Steak and cheese or steak and butter grill? Um, steak and butter grill is the one that I'm familiar with. Uh, let's see here. What else do we have? Okay, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting there. I'm almost getting there. Thank you guys so much for all these comments. Wow, 270 people on here. This is nuts. Someone said, great going, Jen. Yes, awesome, Jen. Good going. Hopefully she's still watching. She's upstairs uh, manning the movie theater while I'm down here. I'm going to probably do more of these live streams if you guys like this because that's the only downside of owning the movie theater is once you watch the movie. Well, we played the movie A Man Called Otto. I think I watched that movie six times. And so I can come down here in the basement of the movie theater and get some stuff done. And this is a lot of fun. It's so inspirational talking to all of you. And you guys are giving me such good ideas on the name of the movie and everything too. So I really appreciate it. Let's see. There's so many nice things in here. Okay. Someone said, what is HS? Uh, hyper, hyper something. I should know it. My daughter had it. If you go back and watch my 30 day carnivore video, I talk all about it, but real quick, it's a horrible skin condition. My daughter, Lily, she's 18 now. She had open heart surgery and the poor kid has been through so much. She has this HS condition. It looks like acne, but it's extremely painful. She had it on her back. She had it on her chest. She had it for years. And the thing that really, really pisses me off. Sorry for my language. Um, we took her to dermatologists all over the state of Wisconsin for years, for four or five years. At one point she was crying to me, dad, do something like oh, not, this hurts so bad. I'm like, she's like, I'm ready to kill myself just to get out of this pain. It hurts so bad. Those doctors, they gave her creams, they gave her pills. And the last one said, we'll give you, we'll give her this injection. It's going to completely shut down her immune system. Nothing else worked. And thankfully we were smart enough to not do that injection. And that's what led me to carnivore because Jordan Peterson's daughter, Michaela Peterson, she had a lot of similar issues to my daughter, Lily. And Michaela Peterson's been doing carnivore for years now and just thriving. So um, I wanted Lily to try carnivore for that reason, but I left it up to her. She decided to do it herself. And long story short, after thousands of dollars, four different dermatologists trying everything all over the state, not one of those 
dermatologist said maybe it's just her diet. Lily went on carnivore and it was right around day eight. Almost, it was like a miracle. Almost half of her back was cleared up. She did carnivore for 30 days and then she tried doing keto for a little while and she's back on carnivore now. So she's been doing carnivore for maybe 50 days now with just a little bit of keto in between. And her HS is almost completely cleared up. It's absolutely amazing. And it really opened my eyes. Like, look at all these kids. Like, Emma's got acne on her face. Uh, Lily has HS. People have rosacea and skin issues and um, dermatitis. There's all these different skin issues. And, and I truly believe a lot of those is simply, it's just diet. It's just like someone that eats a peanut and they're allergic to a peanut and they get a rash or worse, their throat closes up and they could die from eating that peanut because they're allergic to it. It's the same thing. And there's just so many other foods that we're eating. So Emma had HS, uh, I'm sorry, Lily had HS. It's almost completely uh, cleared up on carnivore diet. And it was from something that she was eating. Let's see, what else we got here? Someone said, yes, muscle growth and fiber density in muscles is much more pronounced. Yeah, I, I'm feeling it. I feel, I feel so good. And I just have this excess energy that I, I, I put some uh, dumbbells next to my uh, desk because I'm in and out of my office editing videos and doing stuff like this all the time. I got to get some here at the theater. And so every time I go to the desk, I'll just I'll hit the weights real quick and then I'll sit down. And then when I leave, I come back, I'll hit the weights again. Uh, generic Jane, pork rinds. Pork rinds are fine on carnivore. You just have to be very careful, as Dr. Barry says, be an ingredient detective. Don't even look at the front, look at the back. There's some pork rinds at like Walmart that got a bunch of junk in them. You got to be very careful. And then there's other ones that are very good. You got to learn to become an ingredient detective and make sure there isn't that garbage in there. The fewer ingredients, the better. Uh, Emma and I used this can of duck fat the other day. It was the first time I ever used it. And I was like, someone got me the can and I'm like, there's no way we're using this, Emma. Disconnected. Bluetooth connected. Oh, hopefully, is my audio still there? I just got my headphones dropped off, so hopefully we're still good. Let me know if the audio is not good. Um, but the, anyways, that duck fat, I looked at the ingredients thinking there'd be propellant and all sorts of junk in it, and there was one ingredient, duck fat. That's it. And when I eat a steak, there's one ingredient, steak. So if you can find things with one ingredient, pork belly, it's just got pork belly in it, it's usually pretty good for you. But pork rinds can be just fine. Just be, be very careful. Look at the labels. Let's see. Hopefully the audio is still working. I'm going to skip down 8.30. Oh my goodness. I'm so, I'm really sorry guys. Okay. They can hear me good. I, I'm, I'm so sorry if you left a comment. I missed it. There's just so many here. Uh, again, if you have an important question, please leave it below and thank you for all of the compliments and nice words. Someone says, what's up, Sean? Intentional carnivore. Sean's the man. Okay, let's see. Trying to get through to the questions. Okay, here we go. Dave Hall, question. Please explain the bowl. I think he's saying bowel. Bowel movement issues when starting carnivore. I go one time and a very little. Am I packing it on? Well, it depends on what part of carnivore you're on. Uh, maybe other people can comment more. A lot of people, the first couple days, they might have horrible uh, diarrhea. Um, I'm an adult. I can talk about poop and farts, and I don't really care. So we'll just go right into it. Uh, one of the big questions I always get is, you need fiber. Aren't you just completely backed up? You probably only go on like every couple days. That's true for me. I don't know what it is for you guys. Um, I go uh, once every three or four days, the number two. And the reason is, and I'm not, I'm not constipated. I'm not in any pain or any discomfort whatsoever. Less waste in, less waste out. That's all it is. Before, when I was eating the standard American diet, I'm eating breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, granola bars, fruit in between, popcorn, candy, junk food. All that stuff's got to go somewhere. So I was going much more frequently. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, I go much less frequently, but it's not due to constipation. And the whole fiber thing that you need fiber, that's another big myth. I, I don't have any fiber and I'm just, I'm perfectly fine. And there's thousands and thousands of other people doing carnivore and they're perfectly fine on it. So hopefully Dave Hall, that answers your question. Thank you. Oh, uh, here we go. Fa I like this question. Favorite food to eat? Hamburger for me. Uh, man, I, I'm so much less picky now, but I've ruined it for myself because the other day that steak I made that I told you about, I smoked for two hours, reverse seared, the reverse seared and cherry smoke ribeye steak was the most amazing thing I've ever eaten. I can't really say it's my favorite because that's like a one-time special thing. Otherwise, it's hamburger patties. If you ask my daughter Emma that question, it would be hamburger patties. Uh, we get some good organic ones. We're very fortunate and blessed. They're kind of expensive, but we get some from uh, 
on my neighbor. We just got patties from them. And then we had some from Costco before that, that Emma will throw in the air fryer and, uh, bacon, bacon burgers are my favorite go-to. Otherwise my power bowl, I mentioned earlier, man, I got to catch up on these comments. Let's see here. Let's see. I'm going to try to skip ahead. If you have a big question, someone said, have you heard of Dr. Sean O'Meara? No, I haven't. Bearded butchers are really good. Thank you. I'm trying to catch up on these. Someone said a little sugar in the curing process doesn't add hardly any of the end product. Okay, good to know. I'm always weary, and I know a lot of people are about bacon, but that's why I'm going to try to make it myself. Janet, I am about 50 days into carnivore, and I'm down 32 pounds, and she feels great. Congratulations, Janet. I'm so happy for you. I love hearing those reports. Good job. I love talking to other people that have decided to become, as I always say, the captain of their own ship and you're in control now and life is it's not just the food either you're in control of everything now that's amazing good job let's see i'm trying to catch up on these here oh here we go alex minor hope said how you should make a video on how you make your carnivore power bowl yeah emma and i started doing one of those and somehow we lost the footage for it we make it so often i'm going to do another video it's it's very simple but Man, it's so good. It's so good. It's so convenient. It's so good for you. It's like win, 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 win. It's convenient because you can just throw it in the fridge and grab it if you need something to go. Sometimes I'll have it like if I just have a small steak, I'm like, oh, I'm still a little hungry. Have a little bit of a power bowl on the side. And it's just, uh, it energizes you for sure. Okay. Man, thank you for all these. Run far away from the horse. My junior college teacher said we were evolved on a vegetarian diet. I asked him why we had forward-facing eyeballs, Hunter, and why I was medically cured and felt better than ever in my life since only eating animals. Crickets. Yeah. <laughs> I love that comment. Crickets. That's the same thing I get when, again, I'm not bashing vegans, but that's the only negative I have on here is when they tell me I'm a horrible person for eating meat. And then I say, well, what about the 62 million birds that die a year Per the EPA from pesticide poisoning so that you can eat all your different vegetables. That's exactly what I hear every time. Crickets. Here we go. Getting caught up. I'm getting near the bottom. Oh, someone said, hey, friends, hit the like button. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Carnivore Pete, nose to tail. Yep, I agree. I'm getting something from a new company this week. Uh, they are called, oh, man, my brain is usually so good. And I'm trying to think now. Force of Nature force of nature and they sell regenerative uh beef and one of the they're going to send me some stuff to test one of the things they sell is ground beef but it has liver uh real liver mixed in with it and it's supposed to be some of the best burgers ever and then you're getting more nose to tail and you're getting the nutrients from the liver if you're not comfortable eating just straight up liver like that's one thing i haven't done yet i have liver pills that i've been supplementing with uh, but I'm going to try that meat. I'll do a video on it. It's, it's, I've heard from several other carnivores. It's amazing. And those are some of the best tasting burgers. But you're, then you're getting that nose to tail. You're getting all the nutrients. Janet said, my name is Shan Janet and I am a sugar addict. Yeah, I hear you. Carb addict myself. Let's see. We're getting there. I'm getting, I'm almost caught up here. Still hear you. Okay, that was a little while. Another movie title, Misguided About Meat. Oh, so true. Got the alliteration in there too. Man, you guys are good at this. There's some really good ones. This is going to be very hard to decide. I'm going to, ultimately, I'm probably going to end up putting this out there and just say, let's vote for it. I, uh, again, I want this to be, this is, a, this is our carnivore diet movie. This isn't my carnivore diet movie. Someone said here, Hector. I love filet mignon with extra tallow. Been carnivore on and off, but restarting now. Oh yeah, that's so good. And th that's the one thing I've been I've been getting good at. So if I have a ribeye, I'll usually just eat the ribeye. But if I had something like filet mignon or a New York strip steak, something that's less fatty, I will supplement some beef tallow uh, or some ghee if you can tell if you can tolerate uh, ghee. Okay. Um, and a friend of ours came over and brought some wagyu beef tallow. And it was expensive and he gave me the rest of it and I bought it off of him and I've been, that's what I used the other day and that stuff is delicious. Yeah, filet mignon, that used to be my big go-to. Now I kind of go lean more towards ribeye, but 
Uh, someone's asking, where in Wisconsin am I? I'm in central Wisconsin. I'm in Montello, Wisconsin. If anyone's out there and they want to stop in and meet me, come to the Montello Theater. I would be happy to meet you, give you a little tour. And we even have some uh, keto-approved snacks, hopefully carnivore snacks here soon. As of yesterday, <laughs> someone said, fart-free carnivore. Yeah, I mentioned that in my first video. Prior to carnivore, I think I farted 500 times a day, and I'm lucky if I get one fart out now. Someone said, I don't know if that's a good thing or not. It's nice to fart every now and then. <laughs> we got all the fart comments now. For sure on the fart free, maybe a few a week, maybe. Yep. That's because your stomach is just, uh, your stomach is just chilled and relaxed and just doing its thing. Not having to process all of that junk that it did before. Here we go. Someone had a suggestion for Hector. Ease into it slowly. Did keto three years ago. Lost 40 pounds. Regained it all plus 10. It's because of the sugar. Dr. Barry said, turn down the carb dial. That was it. Yeah, really good advice. Yeah, some people want to just jump right into it. It's, that's why I always say to people, it's so important. I keep using that analogy, like you're, you're, the, you're the captain of your own ship now. Uh, I really believe that. Like before, I imagined myself laying on the ground in the fetal position while the Twinkies and the donuts were driving my ship right into a hurricane and into a storm. And now I stood up and I'm like, I'm going to take control. But before I take control of this huge ship, I need to know how to navigate the ship. I need to know how to fuel the ship. And I need to know how to do it properly. What's the best way to do that? So, so important. Do your own research. It's amazing. We're so blessed to have all of this free information out there. It's Dr. Barry, like if you're going to do research, go to Dr. Barry. He's got the videos on it. And I felt so much more uh, comfortable. And uh, that's what ultimately made my decision because I saw Frigno Freedom's videos, but I'm like, this is still craziness. And to hear, do the research through Dr. Barry's videos is what eventually convinced me. Life and DIY. Hey, Carrie. So this is my sister, Holly. I don't know if she wants me to say that, but go check out her channel. She's got an awesome YouTube channel. And uh, she's almost carnivore. I don't know if she is. I was talking to her last week. She's been eating a very interesting, limited, restrictive diet for many years now uh, due to several health issues. And she's uh, bordering ketogenic, and she wasn't sure the last time I spoke. So uh, yeah, go check out her channel if you want. Oh, intentional carnivore. Thank you. 289 people in the chat. Hit that push, hit that like button. Yeah, please do. Thank you. Oh, almost caught up here. Carnivore Pete said, idea for a movie, sustainability versus vegan and nose to tail eating. While on the topic, try beef cheeks for stew and tongue. Yeah, I haven't tried any of those things yet. And one thing I really want to do is Emma. Emma is so awesome. I frankly, I'm be, I'm always honest. I'm a big baby sometimes. And the thought of some of those things, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I could do it. And I'm sure if I did it, I'd be just fine. So Emma and I did sardines the other day. I know you guys are like, you big baby. I've never had sardines my whole life. And it kind of freaked me out eating a little, a little tiny fish with bones in it and stuff. Uh, but not Emma. She's just crazy. She goes right into it. She was, we did a video where we're just going to, we're going to taste test the sardines. She ended up eating the whole can on video. The first time I took her out for a really good steak, Man, it was like uh, she just cleaned that steak down. Compassionate carnivore. She's not going to waste a morsel of it. And some of these things, I, I guarantee you, she would probably try with no issue. We should do a video with Emma eating uh, some beef cheeks or some tongue and try it. And liver, too. We should just suck it up because I know it's not as bad as it is. It's just one of those things I've never had before, and i got to just jump in and do it. We got another super chat. Can you name a species that has forward-looking eyes, not like a deer, which is sideways, but has forward-looking eyes that eats primarily plants? Yeah, you got a point. You got a good argument there. Someone said, so you just eat tallow raw. No, I put it in with my steak. Uh, sometimes I'll grill a steak. Oftentimes I'll cook a steak on the cast iron skillet, and I'll put some beef tallow in there, and I'll cook it in the beef tallow. And a lot of times I'll take my steak, I'll take that fatty piece, and I'll render the fat in the cast iron skillet, then you have the tallow, you have the beef fat, and then at the end, I'll put some Kerrygold butter in, and you end up with this amazing, we call it the carnivore sauce. You end up with the carnivore sauce, and you pour that over the steak, or you, with these little metal ramekins, we'll put it in, and it'll dip the steak in it. It's, it's fat, and it's delicious, and it's salty, and it's so good, and it's like just what my body needs. Oh, Mike, I am up about six pounds in months on May on carnivore. Some of it is water retention for sure, but I feel great working out twice a day and getting stronger every day. Barely feel fatigued. Awesome. 
yeah, you, maybe you're putting on muscle. That's the thing. I really wish I would have measured. There's some advice if you're starting out on carnivore. It takes a, it takes a couple of minutes to just do your measurements. And it's going to be so much more reassuring for you because your water weight will fluctuate. And maybe you're, maybe you're building muscle on carnivore. Muscle weighs a lot. So if you just do those measurements, it can be very reassuring. Maybe you check the scale a couple of weeks in and you're disappointed. But then you look at your measurements, you're like, oh, look, I lost two inches of my waist and my arm went down and all these things. So Oh, awesome. Vin is here too. Hey, Vin. I didn't see you on there. I hope you're doing well. I hope your parents are doing well. We got to get together again. Uh, Vin is my dad's neighbor and good friend. And uh, unfortunately, we haven't seen you in a while. It's like winter. Everything dies down, but we're going to be we're gonna be over there a lot more often up at the lake. So hope you are doing well, buddy. Here we go. Someone said, people who run into problems and quit are underrepresented. Yeah, I... I, I I don't know, man. That's an interesting point. How do we know about it? That's one thing. I wish there was more studies and more research and more data on carnivore. It's so hard to get it because, again, there's no big, uh, there's no big uh, medical company behind it that's trying to sell some pills. So let's see here. Wow, I got almost down to the bottom now. Oh, no, I didn't. Never mind. Sorry, I thought it was at the bottom here. Someone said, I ate sardines for dinner tonight. That's Charger Mopar. If you guys aren't familiar with Charger Mopar, he is the original, the OG carnivore diet. How long has it been, Charger Mopar? 42 years you've been eating nothing but meat. Amazing. I've watched a couple of your uh, interviews and podcasts, and man, that's, that is awesome. And you too, sir. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your comments. Most of the live streams and videos, you're always leaving really good comments, and it, it, it means a lot. Thank you. All right, let's see. <laughs> Someone said, Carrie, you should name the movie Be the Captain of Your Own Ship. Yeah, I know. I, I use that one a lot, but it's funny because uh, after, shortly after I started Carnivore, if someone's not familiar with that reference, maybe they're not because I'm so into movies, but that is from the movie... Captain Phillips starring Tom Hanks, which is a true story about a guy that was taken over by some pirates in Somalia. And when one of the pirates came aboard, Tom Hanks was the captain. The pilot, the, the pirate said to him, uh, I'm the captain now. I'm the captain now. I'm in control now. And so it's funny. I saw that a couple days after going carnivore. And it made me think of that. Like, hey, I'm the captain now. I'm in control of my own ship now. Lots of movie references if you've watched... Uh, some of my videos, my 30 day reference video. The other big one is the Ma the matrix. Another one's the twilight zone. I feel like I'm living in the twilight zone after you become carnivore and you look around at all of the things that are completely backwards from what you've been told your whole life. Like you got to have fiber, like, uh, meat's going to kill you. Oh, uh, you got to eat more vegetables. You got to do this. It's like, man, all the advice I've gotten from all the doctor visits I've had that were just a complete waste of time. If I would have just gone on carnivore way back then, everything seems to be the opposite of of what it really is. Someone said, any problems arise because your wife isn't carnivore? No, my wife's very supportive and good. And frankly, we have a very weird diet on our family for years now, which honestly is pretty much my fault. I should be a better CEO or leader of the family. But Emma was vegan for a while. My wife, Jen, was vegetarian. My daughter, Katie, she's talked about starting carnivore. And again, I'm not pushing any of them. Uh, she eats a very well-balanced diet. She counts her calories. She'll have some popcorn and she'll be just fine. And she's kind of doing her own thing. So we've kind of for years before I started carnivore been all over, but I don't know, Rachel, if you saw the previous comment from I create crafts, that was Jen. She actually just, uh, stopped being a vegan. Uh, sorry. She was a vegetarian, not a vegan. She stopped being a vegetarian about a week ago. And, uh, she ate chicken today for the first time. She had eggs and some, uh, turkey the other day as well. So Really happy for her. She's not a full-blown carnivore, but she's heading in that direction. She did keto with me years ago and uh, did very well on it. But her thing too is she's compassionate for animals. And she just says she doesn't like the texture of meat. But uh, I got I just, I got to have her. I got to have her try that steak I made the other day. And I know she'll be singing a different song, but I don't think she's had steak in maybe 10 years, if even that. I know when she had the triplets, when she was pregnant with the triplets, she had crazy cravings for uh, burgers. So uh, we'll, have to get her, start, we'll have to start with baby steps. 
Someone said, my name for the movie, Thriving in the Modern World, Meat-Based Diet. Yeah, so true. That's the thing with carnivores. A lot of people look at it like, oh, you're just going to lose some weight, but thriving is, is the definition, man. I just, I feel like I'm thriving. I feel like I have so much energy. I, I don't know what it is, like if it's uh, coincidence or what, but I've been doing YouTube for eight years, 514 videos, and I, I was stuck at 80,000 subscribers for forever. And maybe it's a coincidence. Maybe it's just I got lucky falling into this carnivore thing. But when I started doing carnivore, it seems like my videos got better. People, they were resonating with people more. And I attribute that to carnivore. Maybe it was just luck. Maybe it was just circumstance. But shortly after that, all of a sudden, now I got a, over 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. And everything else, the other businesses that we run seem to just be thriving. I have more energy and I have more motivation. And I have more focus and my decision making is way better than it was before. So love it. Love these ideas. Thriving in the modern world. Couldn't say it better. Someone said, uh, resort for beginners could do a two week course with all their issues and numbers being followed and measured and resolved. That would be cool. Yeah. I wonder if some people are doing that or not. I know there's some people like Dr. Anthony, uh, Chafee, He's got a thing that you can join and they give you some support, but I'm not entirely familiar with all, what all of that is. Speaking of Dr. Anthony Chafee, I am going to be on his channel at next week. Um, I don't know when it's going to come out, maybe in two weeks. So that's going to be exciting. I love his stuff. He's done so much on, uh, it's amazing. His, his story, man, has been doing, I think, Carnivore for 10 years now. It's so funny when you look at, someone did a meme and they said, look at the vegan doctors. And it was like three doctors and they were kind of, pale and their hair was falling out and then they showed three carnivore doctors it was like dr baker and dr chafee and i'm like these guys they're like which one do you want to do now <laughs> it's kind of funny but dr chafee is killing it for sure so i look forward to talking to him some of his research he's done on plants killing you it's like this stuff is crazy and then you look at the research and and the actual facts behind it it's like this all makes sense and i see it too because i was eating those things and i felt horribly that was my main food before going carnivore with spinach and salad. I know there's oxalates and there's stuff in there and there's 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 toxins and there's things in vegetables. They don't want to be eaten. That can mess you up. So Adam Lacey, I'm late to the party. Is this guy carry gold or what? Oh, that's very nice. Thank you. Making me blush. So many nice comments, man. I really appreciate it. Okay, let's see. I thought I got caught up here. Oh, here we go. Charger Mopar, 39 years. This man has been a carnivore for 39 years. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Appreciate all of your comments. Thank you so much. What else do we got here? Ozzy, Ozzy Abroad said, also underrepresented are people who are already slim and fit. They're reasonably healthy, but they have a few uh, mingling issues which could get worse later with aging and also hope for anti-aging benefits. Yeah, that's very true. Very true. A, a lot of, I, I mentioned this earlier, if people are just jumping on, I've heard from so many also people that maybe aren't overweight, but they're just elderly in their 60s or in their 70s. Uh, it's so many. I've heard from so many that are doing carnivore and are literally reversing aging. Of course, when you get old, you're going to go slower. You're going to have aches. You're going to have pains. But how much of that is from being old and how much of it is from nutrition? I think Carnivore Ron talked about this a little bit. And when I talked to Anita from Ketogenic Woman, she talked about it too. She has tons of comments from people and they're older and they're not suffering like most old people are at their age where they're, they're having trouble walking and they have arthritis and inflammation. So a big part of the diet. Yeah, I think those people are totally underrepresented. I wouldn't have thought there were so many people in their 70s or 80s doing carnivore for years. In my head, I'm like, those people are set in their ways. They've been eating this way their whole life. Why would they change now? But I've had dozens and dozens of comments and a ketogenic woman has had hundreds of comments on her channel uh, from those folks. Let's see. I'm almost here at the bottom. Sandra. Oh my God, you were just what I needed. Just so inspiring. I'm starting tomorrow. Oh, awesome. Please do your research. Watch the Dr. Barry videos. In meat we trust. That's awesome too. So many good little plays on words. Oh, let's see where else are we here. All you, all you need to cure bacon is salt and pepper. Thank you, Charger Mopar. So 
Yeah, I'm going to check that recipe out. I got to look because I was tempted to salt it. And I'm like, do I even need to cure this? Because we're going to gobble this stuff up so quickly. Maybe I could just salt it and throw it on the smoker for six hours till it gets up to temperature. But I think if I cure it with the salt and pepper, I'm going to have a much better texture afterwards. But I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check the recipes that people have mentioned here. <clears throat> people here we go is another one people don't understand oops sorry about that people don't understand how much toxins are causing to be constantly inflamed until you yes comment of the day they don't understand it until you eliminate everything that is so true and it's so hard to describe to people but it is so true you have these toxins in your body you have these aches and pains and fatigue and you have brain fog you have all these things and then you have it every day and then you have it every week and every month and then you have it for years and then it becomes normal to you you wake up like that and that's just the way you think you're supposed to feel but it's not and the only way the only way to understand is to eliminate all those entirely and it's so hard to describe to people i keep telling people you deserve to feel what it what it's like to live with zero inflammation it's amazing and it's like that saying goes like when you're in the fog you can't see the fog you have to be outside of the fog and look back to be able to realize uh, what the fog looked like and that you were in it Dr. Chafee is the goat. I keep. I hope I'm saying his his name right. I keep double guessing it in my head. Chafee. It's A A. Chafee, not Chaffee. Dr. Chafee is the goat. Let me know if I'm saying that wrong. I, I'll, I'm, I'll watch some more of it. I've watched so many of his videos, but it's just one weird thing I keep getting stuck up on. I even had him in my 30 day video. I took a little snippet from when he was talking about uh, toxins in plants. Dr. Barry made some bacon chips. I watched that. Dr. Barry's amazing, and his wife Nisha is so good too. Uh, I know uh, Emma, I think, has been watching a bunch of her videos. And my sister Holly, who's on here, who has been talking about Nisha's videos. Because uh, I think Nisha has Hashimoto's. Nisha does uh, some Ketovore videos, too. Or she's always got some very good content. Ron says, thanks for this venue so we can get together. Yeah, man, this is fun. I, I, we're going to have to do this more often. Like I said, we're doing movies here at Montello Theater every day except Monday. So I'm going to be here with a couple hours and I would, I would much rather be doing this than anything else. This is a lot of fun. And it's so inspiring hearing people say their results and how much weight they've lost and their diabetes are getting turned around. And all these comments are great. You get used to, this is my good friend Sean from Intentional Carnivore. You get used to living a defeated life. We don't have to live that way anymore. Amen, brother. You, could, you couldn't say it any better, and you knew it, and you lived it. That's why Sean, you guys got to check out Sean's channel. I know I mentioned it earlier, but if you jumped on, 243 pounds, but he doesn't even care about that because he conquered depression and all sorts of other health issues. It's so impressive to me, Sean, just because the 243 is amazing. Like I said to you, if we made a movie just about Sean's life, people would be like, this is BS. There's no way this guy lost 243 pounds in a year, but you did it. You obviously did it. When we were done talking, I was like, Does this guy got a twin and he's like pulling something on me. But the fact that you did that through the horrible, crippling depression, you got up off the couch and you did that in a world where there's your addiction, sugar and carbs was everywhere. It's just amazing. You are truly an inspiration, man. We got to get your story in the carnivore diet movie for sure. All right, let's see. Carnivore figured everything. All right. Wow. We've been out here over two hours. This is crazy. We're, I'm almost at the bottom here now. Let's get to a couple more. Someone else said, yep, never underestimate. Oh, low-carb carnivore. Thank you again. You're, you are always a great commenter. I really appreciate it. And um, never underestimate how bad the old way of eating makes you feel until you stop and see what better feels like. Yep. Yep. That's why I, I talk about this, but the old way of eating became normal. Feeling horrible like a zombie became normal. Lack of sleep all became normal. And now I'm really hoping this new way of feeling amazing doesn't become normal. I hate that about the human brain, how things become normal. Like the fact we, we live in an amazing world right now. The fact I'm talking to hundreds of people online, the fact that you can go fly in a plane and just like majestically fly through the air, it's amazing, but it becomes normal to us. It's something I that annoys me, but I've been writing stuff down on carnivore and I've been uh, much more living in the moment and appreciative of things. So I'm going to make sure that feeling amazing like this and being out of the fog doesn't become normal for me. 
Someone else said, humans have lived off meat since forever. Yes. WEF needs to be locked up with the rest of their friends because there's an attack on meat. Smart people are not easy to control. Yeah. Amen. I keep getting those comments too from people. They're like, oh no, people used to eat vegetables. I'm like, like hunters and gatherers, like if anyone ever went hunting before, even like, I, I know things change over the years and the, the centuries and everything and <clears throat> going back thousands of years or whatever. But even now you, in my area, you'd be lucky. You'd kill a big animal, like a deer, or maybe if you're in another area, like a big elk or something like that. And you would eat a ton of food, a ton of meat. And then you could probably fast for like a week before you'd find something else. And you'd be fine. You'd be living off of that meat like a carnivore. And then maybe like in this area, maybe three weeks out of the year, you could get some raspberries or something. Well, what do you do all winter the rest of the year? You were eating meat, primarily eating meat. And then uh, I keep getting these comments from the vegans too. Well, no, we were designed to eat vegetables. No one's eaten. No one's, they keep saying that too, that no one's done meat long-term. Let's see what it does long-term. I'm like, that's factually inaccurate as well. You can go do the research. So the Intuits, they ate meat and fat and that was it. And they thrived. Many of them lived to be a hundred years old and there were scientists that went and lived with them and studied them. And they were like amazed. They lived to be a hundred years old. And then they went on to eat the same way that they did. Comanches, there's tribes and groups of people, but we kind of live in our bubble here where we're used to the standard American diet, but there's, there's other cultures and other countries that primarily eat meat and they're thriving on it. On the carnivore diet, I never worry about becoming obese. Yeah, same here. I eat till I'm comfortably full and that's, a, that's about it. Wow, guys, this has been awesome. 287 people, 2 hours and 11 minutes. Wasn't expecting to go this long, but I have to, uh, I have to wrap it up now because our movie is almost over and I don't want to make Jen do all the work after. It's very fun owning a movie theater. It's amazing. It's a blessing. I'm so thankful. I'm pinching myself every day. It's been a dream come true. Uh, the only downside is after the movie, it's always a lot of cleanup. A lot of cleanup. Uh, we got it down to a science. We've got some leaf blowers and we've got some equipment. Uh, but Emma's not here today and she's our big cleaner. But uh, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate this. And uh, I hope you guys all have a good night. And more updates to come. I'm going to keep posting. So I didn't realize this, but on the GoFundMe page, I can do updates. So I'm going to do the updates on the GoFundMe page as well. If you want to register to participate and be featured in the documentary, you can register right at the carnivoredietmovie.com. If you want to donate via GoFundMe, you can do that right there. Every penny goes towards it. If you buy a t-shirt, super chat, all those things go towards the documentary. And if you can't donate, but you still want to help, maybe consider just sharing it. If you get the word out there, it'll really help as well. So uh, this has been awesome. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. I truly appreciate it. So does Emma. And uh, Emma and I will have another video for you coming up soon. Emma wants to do her 30-day update, and she hits 30 days tomorrow. So have a great night, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye.